Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie part 1 on what if Naruto manipulated the hatred and the dark crack. Here is a quick summary. Years of hatred and isolation would have shattered even the strongest of individuals, let alone a young child. However, it didn't break Naruto Uzumaki. At least, not fully. What if it had? What if Naruto had cracked? Can he ever hope to mend what he never had? Is there room for love, understanding, and friendships to flourish in a world plagued by animosity and violence? But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. As Naruto Uzumaki drew his first breath, the world greeted him with an unexpected embrace of frigidity, denying him the tender warmth that should have accompanied a mother's touch. Far from dissipating, this coldness morphed into an unyielding frost that clung to his being, freezing his heart and fueling his determination to thaw the icy chains that bound him. No matter how much he aged, the chilling sensation never seemed to abandon him. Instead, it continued to expand and engulf his entire being. Escaping its grasp proved impossible, despite his relentless efforts and fervent wishes. Over time, the initial coldness underwent a profound metamorphosis, growing into a sentiment that was both abhorrent and repulsive. Hatred. Every fiber of the village he called home seeped with a deep-rooted hatred, as if it oozed from every pore. The air itself carried an overwhelming sense of malice and disdain, all of it directed solely toward him. He couldn't escape the constant surveillance of pairs of eyes, always lurking, forever watching his every move, ready to unleash a piercing stare filled with contempt and hostility at any given moment. Naruto hated it. He hated it with every fiber of his being. He had done absolutely nothing deserving such abhorrent treatment. So why was he treated as if he were the Shinigami spawn? It wasn't fair. How could a village that preached love and acceptance reject a child that did absolutely nothing? How could they treat him as though he was a monster in human flesh? Hypocrites, the lot of them. The people of Konoha were nothing but liars and hypocrites. So what did that make him then? He knew what he was, a monster. A monster created and hated by the very hands of this village. Mizuki only further reinforced the certainty of it. Not long before his promotion to Genin, the truth of his existence and the bane of his suffering were laid bare. Flashback. After failing two consecutive graduation exams, a third was inevitable to occur. However, before Naruto could somberly walk away from the happy sight of what he longed for, freshly minted Genin celebrating their graduation with their families, Mizuki-sensei approached him with a kind smile and asked him if he wanted to talk. Having just failed the graduation exam once again, and his spirits in the dumb, Mizuki offering to console him was something he never imagined possible. Perhaps things were finally looking up for him. As the sun descended overhead, casting a tranquil palette of cool evening hues, he and Mizuki-sensei found themselves perched on a ledge, overlooking the majestic visages of the Hokage Monument. Engaged in deep conversation, they delved into the reasons behind Iruka-sensei's perceived failure, despite his relentless efforts to graduate this time around. Mizuki sensei tried his best to soothe his sadness and disappointment. Iruka only wants what's best for you. He only wishes for you to be strong. His yelling and getting angry at you is proof of that. He would never get so angry if he did not care. Mizuki sensei's words comforted him somewhat, but not completely. I just really wanted to graduate this time around, Naruto whispered melancholy, his head towards the ground. At the time, he was too busy wallowing in his sorrow, however, had he looked up, he would have caught the cruel and unholy glint in Mizuki's eyes. Well, I suppose I could tell you another way to graduate. Mizuki chuckled at the face Naruto was making. It's a secret, but I feel you deserve to know. Mizuki calmly stated. The words that reached Naruto's ears left him astounded. Having endured years of isolation and animosity from both villagers and shinobi, he found it hard to fathom that someone was helping him, supporting the pursuit of his dream. It was like a dream come true. What is it? Naruto all but shouted with excitement. What other way is there for me to graduate? Mizuki chuckled at the energetic blonde and put his hands up in a calming motion. Now hold on. I can't tell you if you keep shouting at me. Naruto sheepishly smiled and rubbed the back of his head. My bad, Mizuki-sensei. Seeing Naruto finally calm down, Mizuki, still chuckling a bit, answered, It's alright Naruto. I understand. This is what you have to do. Mizuki went on to explain that, if he wanted to graduate and become Genin, he would have to steal the scroll of sealing and learn one of the jutsu within it. It proved to be a remarkably easy feat. With his wealth of experience in the captivating art that was pranking, he possessed the ability to infiltrate any place without detection. Well, almost any place, as Aruka sensei had an uncanny knack for locating him. Nonetheless, armed with the intelligence applied by Mizuki sensei regarding the scroll's whereabouts, Naruto was determined to don a headband by night's end. End of flashback. 
it didn't take him very long to find the scroll of sealing, and with a bit of his own flair on the hinge, no jutsu the warak no jutsu the scroll was his. Having reached the rendezvous point, he realized he had arrived earlier than expected. Taking advantage of this timely arrival, he immersed himself in the scroll, dedicating his efforts to grasping any of the jutsu techniques within. The first jutsu that caught his attention happened to be the Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, a form of ninjutsu he was the absolute worst at. Nevertheless, if he desired to progress and graduate, he knew he had to master it, as the Cage Bunshin seemed to be the only viable jutsu he had a chance of executing successfully. Only when Aruka sensei appeared, haggard and drenched with sweat, did he excitedly tell him of his progress and his deal with Mizuki. However, before the two could continue the conversation, Mizuki appeared out of nowhere with a feral smirk on his otherwise crazed face. There, he discovered why the village and its villagers hated him. You're the nine-tailed fox. Mizuki shouted with absolute sadistic glee. Like a relentless avalanche crashing down upon him, the harsh truth struck Naruto with an overwhelming force. Throughout his entire existence, he had lived in the shadow of the villagers' inexplicable hatred towards him, without ever understanding its origin. But in that profound moment, the pieces of the puzzling puzzle finally fell into place. Twelve years ago, when the Kai Ubi unleashed its cataclysmic fury upon the one serene village, shattering its serenity and leaving behind a somber tapestry of death, devastation, and despair. Now, burdened with the very embodiment of that destructive force, Naruto became the apotheosis of their deepest fears, their bitter resentment, and their desperate need for a scapegoat to bear the weight of the countless irreplaceable loved ones, lost during that fateful night. That ignited a fire within him, stoking a rage more ferocious than anything he had ever experienced. He dared to dream of ascending to a position of authority, taking the helm of this wretched village, all in a desperate quest for acknowledgement and the faintest trace of compassion from the inhabitants who regarded him with repulsion, seeing nothing but an inhuman entity reflected in their disdainful eyes. Yet, as the veils of ignorance were lifted from his eyes, he found himself questioning the worthiness of such a path. Was it truly worth subjecting himself to the leadership of a contemptible, ignorant, and narrow-minded populace? Did he aspire to guide those who saw not the essence of Naruto Uzumaki, a child whose life was never truly his to walk, but a monster meant to be chained to and for the village's sake? In the face of this quandary, a fundamental question arises. Does he genuinely yearn to assume leadership of this forsaken village? Was his heart truly set on claiming the mantle of the Hokage? Did his aspiration to become the Hokage stem from a longing for acknowledgement? a yearning for kindness. However, these inquiries only gave birth to further questions. Why did he crave the recognition of these myopic villagers? More and more questions seemed to manifest themselves with each question answered. Amidst a flurry of perplexing and distracting thoughts, Naruto made his way through the bustling village, gearing up for the momentous occasion of his graduation ceremony from the academy. Despite the internal conflict plaguing him, Naruto couldn't help but feel a surge of joy as he finally completed his academy training. His unwavering aspiration to become a shinobi remained resolute, unaffected by the challenges he faced. Furthermore, this achievement opened the door for him to venture beyond the confines of Konoha. The life of a shinobi offered a liberating freedom that he could never experience as a mere civilian. When it came to shinobi, one in particular occupied Naruto's thoughts incessantly. The reigning powerhouse of Konoha, the third Hokage. Upon the night of Mizuki's betrayal and his elevation to the rank of Genin, a surge of adrenaline and unadulterated happiness engulfed Naruto when Aruka sensei revealed his graduation from the academy. The utilization of the cage bunch and no jutsu to pulverize Mizuki and his subsequent graduation momentarily caused Naruto to overlook the fact that the nine-tailed fox resided within him. Or perhaps, deep down, a part of him secretly yearned for it all to be false. Yet, as the fleeting moment subsided and he had the opportunity to reflect on the entire ordeal, profound doubt infiltrated his mind. He began to question the very essence of his identity and the foundation of the village itself. Most significantly, he began to cast doubt upon the unwavering trust he had placed in the one man he believed would never betray him. The venerable third Hokage. Has the third Hokage always been aware of the fox spirit welling within Naruto? Why had this crucial information been withheld? Were there further secrets concealed from him, locked away in the shadows? The image of the man Naruto had come to respect and aspire to be like was gradually crumbling as the truth of his deep involvement started to emerge. Lost in contemplation about the person he believed he had known and deeply cared for, Naruto failed to realize that he had already arrived at his destination. Unbeknownst to him, the door to his soon-to-be former classroom stood mere inches away. Pushing aside the tumultuous thoughts occupying his mind, Naruto took a deep breath, slid open the door, and stepped inside the classroom. At a cursory glance, Naruto could be seen as one of the initial arrivals. 
Sharing the room was Sasuke Chiha, fixated on the window with his hands covering his face, Shikamaru Nara, seemingly slumbering with his head bowed, and a few other unfamiliar individuals. Shikamaru donned a pair of sleek black pants, complemented by a shuriken holster secured firmly to his right leg. Adorning his upper body was a compact jacket bearing his clan symbol on both sides, layered over a standard fishnet shirt. His headband was affixed to his right arm, while his feet were adorned with blue sandals. With his hair tightly tied into a neat ponytail, he sported subtle gray earrings on each ear. Sasuke's attire comprised a high-collared, short-sleeved blue shirt paired with white shorts and blue sandals. Adorning his wrists were arm warmers in white and blue, while light blue bracers with wrappings extended to just below his knees. Secured to his right leg was a kunai holster, and he wore his headband on his forehead. The abrupt sound of a sliding door closing caught the attention of both Sasuke and the now-awakened Shikamaru. Their gazes immediately shifted towards the origin of the noise, and they couldn't hide their surprise when they spotted the supposedly failed student, who had been dubbed the dead last, and who had failed the graduation exam just a day prior, stepping through that very entrance. Furthermore, positioned on his forehead was a headband adorned with a metal piece bearing the proud insignia of the leaf. While not overly invested, Shikamaru felt compelled to satisfy his growing curiosity by vocalizing his inquiry to Naruto. Naruto, what are you doing here? With a wide grin, Naruto glanced at Shikamaru and boisterously retorted, Come on, Shikamaru. Isn't it obvious why I'm here? I graduated, duh. Judging by that headband on your forehead, it's pretty obvious that you've graduated. But what I'm curious about is, how did you manage to pass? Shikamaru was fairly certain that Naruto had failed the graduation exam just the day before. Thus, it seemed peculiar that he just appeared suddenly and had somehow succeeded in graduating, and within such a brief time frame as well. Naruto's smile faltered, and a hint of melancholy shadowed his eyes upon hearing Shikamaru's question. Shikamaru found himself taken aback, almost shocked, by the abrupt vanishing of cheerfulness in Naruto's disposition. From the moment he had met Naruto, the mischievous child had never failed to wear a beaming smile. This abrupt transformation piqued Shikamaru's curiosity, prompting him to wonder what events had transpired to bring about such a rapid transformation in Naruto. With a faint smile reclaiming its place on Naruto's face, albeit slightly smaller than before, he nonchalantly shrugged his shoulders and uttered, that's a secret. Shikamaru's suspicions intensified as he witnessed Naruto's sudden shift in demeanor. Had Naruto been his usual self, he would have shamelessly boasted to everyone about his heroic encounter with a massive snake or some other extraordinary feat to secure his graduation alongside their peers. However, this new incarnation of Naruto was different. While uncertain about the specifics or reasons, Shikamaru could sense that this altered Naruto would prove to be more troublesome than his previous self. Sasuke's impressions echoed those of Shikamaru. He, too, had keenly observed Naruto's unexpected appearance, complete with a headband and a subtle yet discernible shift in his demeanor. Um, what happened to the dope? Frankly, Sasuke harbored a minimal interest in Naruto or the events surrounding him. As long as Naruto didn't hinder his own objectives, Sasuke remained indifferent to whatever choices brought Naruto contentment. Naruto, blissfully unaware of his classmates' current musings, strolled along the rows and eventually took a seat, unknowingly positioning himself two seats away from Sasuke. The two briefly glanced at one another before looking away and returning to their own business. Naruto, finding himself with no other distractions, reverted to contemplating the elderly man whom he believed he had known since his childhood. Devoid of Naruto's usual hyperactivity and boisterous clamor, the classroom fell into an uncommon state of tranquility, interrupted only by the melodious chirping of birds and the gentle rustling of leaves outside. Shikamaru settled back into his nap, preferring to avoid the perplexing sight of this unfamiliar, subdued Naruto. Meanwhile, despite finding this uncharacteristic behavior incredibly peculiar for the typically boisterous and disruptive Naruto, Sasu chose to disregard it, opting instead to gaze out the window and immerse himself in his own whirlwind of thoughts. This was the peculiar tableau that awaited the remaining graduates. Shikamaru peacefully dozing off, Sasu brooding with intensity, and several other students going about their own business. Nothing out of the ordinary. However, what struck them as truly abnormal was Naruto's unexpected presence despite failing the graduation exam. Furthermore, his absence of boisterous outbursts and boundless energy was astounding. Instead, he emanated an uncanny stillness, engrossed in profound contemplation. This revelation left everyone astounded. Naruto, capable of deep thought. Hiba, emerging from his initial state of astonishment, confronted Naruto loudly. Naruto, what are you doing here? Hiba and Azuka sported a hooded grey zip-up fur coat, accompanied by grey pants adorned with a kunai holster on his right leg. Completing his ensemble were blue open-ended sandals and distinctive red tribal markings adorning both sides of his cheeks. The headband rested prominently on his forehead, while his loyal companion Akamaru perched atop his head. 
Taken aback by the abrupt shrill noise, Naruto instinctively pivoted toward its source. What do you think, dog breath? I graduated. Isn't it obvious with this headband on my forehead? It was true, a headband was visibly strapped to his forehead, confirming its presence. The others were taken aback by this revelation, considering that just the day before, he had once again failed the graduation exam. After the insult was hurled, Kiba, who was initially on the verge of further questioning how he managed to graduate, promptly forgot all about it. What did you call me? Kiba barked out. Sporting a mischievous grin, Naruto taunted, you heard me, dog breath. Your mouth is straight out of the kennel, and a stench, it's like you rolled in it. Kiba looked about ready to attack Naruto, and he was about to, had two girls not run him over. Out of the way. Out of the way. Clomp. 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 Sakura, hunched over and panting, stated to the girl next to her, I win, Ino. Sakura Haruno adorned herself in a vibrant red Kipau-inspired gown, complemented by traditional shinobi blue sandals. Concealed beneath her dress, she wore dark green shorts and a kunai holster fastened to her right thigh. As the final touch, she stylishly wore her headband as a hairband, showcasing her long cherry blossom-colored hair. Ino, the girl standing next to Sakura, scoffed and retorted, No, you didn't. I was one step ahead of you. I won. In a distinctive ensemble, Ino Yamanaka donned a purple attire consisting of a blouse with a high collar and a coordinating apron skirt. Complementing her outfit were bandages wrapped around her abdomen and legs. Her arms were adorned with arm warmers in white and purple hues. Her platinum blonde hair was elegantly tied into a ponytail, while a single strand of bangs gracefully framed the right side of her face. Notably, she creatively repurposed her headband as a belt, securing it around her waist. Lost in their argument over who had reached the classroom first, the two girls engaged in a relentless bickering match. Unaware of their surroundings, they failed to notice Kiba lying on the ground, sprawled out in a state of exhaustion. Having been accidentally trampled upon by the zealous duo, he remained unnoticed amidst their heated exchange. Just as Sakura was on the verge of hurling another insult at Ino, her words caught in her throat when she spotted Sasuke seated near the windows. The sight of him caused an immediate pause as a wave of emotions washed over her, momentarily distracting her from the verbal exchange. With heart in her eyes, Sakura dashed over to Sasuke, hoping to secure a seat beside him. Spotting the same opportunity, Ino swiftly moved toward Sasuke as well, determined to secure a seat next to him. As the other girls entered the classroom, they too caught wind of the opportunity to sit next to Sasuke, mirroring Sakura and Ino's intentions. And so, a race ensued among them, fueled by the desire to claim the coveted seat beside Sasuke. Naruto, noticing Sakura rushing towards his location, jumped up with enthusiasm and greeted her exuberantly. Hey there, Sakura-chan. How are you doi? Sakura, without even acknowledging Naruto's presence, swiftly brushed him aside with a curt move it and proceeded directly toward Sasuke, focusing all her attention on him. Despite feeling a pang of hurt from yet another rejection, Naruto managed to hide his emotions, not allowing any sign of disappointment to show on his face. Following a brief scuffle, Sakura, Ino, and the rest of the female students in the class found themselves huddled in front of Sasuke, fervently vying for a seat beside him. However, Sasuke remained completely detached, unaffected by their presence. He maintained a stoic silence while paying no heed to their requests or the commotion surrounding him, never uttering a single word and never once acknowledging his supposed fangirls. Realizing the futility of trying to reclaim his seat amidst the ongoing squabble among the females, Naruto made a pragmatic decision. He opted to retreat to the rear of the classroom, where he could choose a seat without getting entangled in the chaos. Spotting an available seat next to Hinata, the only female student not caught up in the battle for a spot near Sasuke, Naruto seized the opportunity. With a sense of relief, he settled down beside Hinata, grateful for the peaceful atmosphere and the chance to sit beside a familiar face. Naruto directed his attention towards Hinata, a bright smile illuminating his face, as he eagerly inquired, Hey Hinata. How are you doing? Hinata Hayuga donned a cream-colored hooded jacket, accentuated with a striking fire symbol adorning the upper sleeves. The cuffs and hem of the jacket were delicately adorned with fur, lending a touch of sophistication. Pairing it with dark blue trousers, she achieved a harmonious and balanced look. With her forehead protection loosely draped around her neck, her distinct featureless wide eyes, devoid of any discernible pupils, stood out. Her dark blue hair, cut just above her forehead in a bowl-like fashion, gracefully framed her face with chin-length strands, enhancing her overall appearance. As Naruto began approaching her, Hinata couldn't help but feel a surge of nervousness and anxiety wash over her. Her index fingers instinctively pressed together and her body fidgeted in place, unable to find a sense of calm. Like a volcano on the verge of erupting, she struggled to maintain her composure when Naruto eventually took the seat beside her. 
Holding on tightly, she resisted the urge to succumb to fainting, determined not to make an unfavorable impression in front of her crush. However, all semblance of control dissipated into thin air as Naruto initiated a conversation with her, overwhelming her with a mixture of excitement and fluttering emotions. Blushing deeply, Hinata's face turned a vibrant shade of crimson before she abruptly fainted, her head unintentionally colliding with the desk. Despite the impact, a faint contented smile lingered on her dazed and flushed face, a testament to the happiness she experienced, even in her momentary unconsciousness. Huh, Naruto mumbled in surprise, not anticipating Hinata's sudden reddening of the face and subsequent fainting. What a weird girl. Suddenly, the classroom door gilded open, revealing a pair of distinctive blue sandals briskly stepping inside the room. Quite down everyone. At the sound of the newcomer's voice, the heads of all the students, including the still bickering females, swiftly turned in unison to see who had just entered the room. Aruka sensei stood confidently before the classroom, holding a clipboard in his left hand. A noticeable tick mark adorned his forehead, serving as a silent indication to all present of his current state of agitation and annoyance. Please find your seats, everyone, Aruka stated firmly, his voice commanding attention. His words were specifically directed at the girls who had been vying for Sasuke's attention, urging them to abandon their pursuit and instead settle into their seats. Despite their initial complaints, the girls swiftly acquiesced when confronted by the stern expression on Aruka sensei's face. As the seating arrangement took shape, Sakura and Ino found themselves positioned next to a visibly disgruntled and annoyed Sasuke. The atmosphere surrounding their seating arrangement was marked by tension and unease, as Sasuke's displeasure was palpable. Naruto found himself seated between Hinata and Shino, occupying the end of the desk, while Hinata sat in the middle, sandwiched between the two boys. Just behind Naruto, Kiba took his seat, flanked by a boy and a girl on his right and left respectively. Towards the far right side of the classroom, Shikamaru had already taken his seat, accompanied by his loyal best friend, Choji Akimichi. Completing their group was an unfamiliar girl, completing their trio. But the class finally silent and settled in their seats, Iruka, content with the tranquil atmosphere, commenced his final lecture as their academy teacher. In today's momentous occasion, all of you stand at a significant milestone. As Genin, you have now attained the official status of ninjas hailing from the village hidden in the leaves. It is with great pride that I urge each of you to wear your headbands as a symbol of honor and distinction, Iruka announced, his voice filled with a sense of accomplishment and encouragement. At the proclamation, a wave of renewed confidence swept through the classroom, evident in each student's uplifted head and squared shoulders. The weight of Aruka's words resonated deeply within them, prompting a collective surge of pride and determination. The atmosphere was charged with a newfound sense of purpose as they embraced their new status as genin, ready to embark on their ninja journeys with heightened resolve. With a gentle yet proud smile, Aruka expressed his heartfelt pride in having been their teacher over the past few years. His words carried a sense of genuine faith and belief in their potential. I am immensely proud of each and every one of you. I have no doubt that you will all go on to become exceptional shinobi, he declared, his voice filled with sincerity. However, it is now time for you to meet your new senseis, who will guide you and impart invaluable knowledge on the path that lies ahead. Embrace this new chapter with honor and dedication to learn, for it will shape your journey as shinobi. As the mention of a new teacher reached their ears, Naruto and Sasuke raised their eyebrows in unison, their interest peaked. The prospect of a different instructor brought a glimmer of curiosity to their eyes as they wondered about the unique teachings and experiences that awaited them under this new mentor. The time has come to assign you all to three-man squads, led by your new sensei who will serve as your squad leader and jonin commander. I will now begin calling out names and revealing the grouping of each team. The atmosphere in the classroom grew electric with a mixture of excitement and trepidation as students leaned forward, eager to hear their fate and discover the comrades they would be bound to in their upcoming journeys as shinobi. As Ruka sensei began listing the names of various students, Naruto's attention waned from the surrounding conversations. He shifted his gaze away from the classroom and fixed his eyes outside, lost in his own thoughts. His wandering eyes eventually brought him to the Hokage Monument. As he peered at the monument, the visages of the previous Hokages, with their ancient wisdom and formidable legacies, seemed to peer into his very soul. Their hollow eyes bore into him, creating a profound sense of scrutiny and judgment. It felt as though these revered figures from the past were silently evaluating Naruto, assessing his character and potential. In truthfulness, when Aruka sensei declared them all Kanoha Shinobi, Naruto's heart churned with a whirlwind of emotions. The truth about his connection with the Kaiubi, the reason behind the villagers and shinobi's prejudice against him, weighed heavily on his mind. Uncertainty and conflicting feelings clouded his sense of belonging to the village he once called home. The knowledge of his own painful past and the constant rejection he faced created lingering doubts within him, doubts that were beginning to surface. Naruto Uzumaki. 
Startled by the mention of his name, Naruto's attention snapped back to the present as he turned toward Aruka sensei Sakura Hirono and Sasuke Chiha will be on Team 7, with Kakashi Haddock serving as your sensei and Jonin leader. The news of Team 7's formation brought an undeniable surge of joy and excitement to Sakura's being. Unable to contain her elation, she practically bounced in her seat, a radiant smile gracing her face. The prospect of being on the same team as Sasuke, her longtime crush, filled her heart with indescribable happiness. Every daydream and aspiration seemed within reach as the reality of working closely with Sasuke unfolded before her. As for Sasuke, a look of utter despair and disappointment washed over his face as the reality of his new teammate sank in. His features contorted, resembling someone who had just taken a bite out of a sour lemon. The prospect of being bound to a fangirl and the dope for the foreseeable future seemed to weigh heavily on him, as if he had been forcefully thrown into an unfavorable situation. The longing for solitude and individual pursuit lingered in his eyes, contrasting sharply with the enthusiasm and anticipation of his fellow teammates. Sasuke's aura exuded a sense of detachment, as if he was mentally preparing himself for the challenges and compromises that came with teamwork. While Naruto was delighted to be teamed up with Sakura, his excitement was dampened by the prospect of working alongside Sasuke. The conflicting emotions within him stirred a mixture of happiness and disappointment. On one hand, he cherished the chance to collaborate with Sakura, the girl he held a deep affection for. On the other hand, the thought of working closely with Sasuke, who often displayed aloofness and indifference, left Naruto feeling upset. Seething with annoyance and disappointment, Ino couldn't hold back her outburst any longer. Her voice laced with anger, she snapped at Sakura, determined to make her intentions known. Screw you, Sakura. I went back down. I'll be the one to win Sasuke's heart, just you wait. A mischievous smirk danced across Sakura's lips as Ino directed her frustration and curses toward her. Taking a moment to savor the opportunity, Sakura retorted with a hint of taunting in her voice, in your dreams, Ino pig. Before Ino could continue her tirade against Sakura, the sound of her name being called by Aruka sensei cut through the tension-filled air. The squad will comprise Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akimichi, under the guidance of Asuma Siratobi, who will assume the role of squad leader for Team 10. A subtle smirk graced Shikamaru's face as he witnessed Ino's indignant outburst. Her frustrated protests about being grouped with a slacker like him and a food addict like Choji amused him. Shikamaru, known for his laid-back attitude, found her reactions predictable and couldn't help but revel in the irony of her frustrations. He knew that their personalities and strengths, though seemingly contrasting, could complement each other in unexpected ways. Shikamaru's strategic mind saw the potential for a balanced and formidable team, one that could surpass the limitations of individual quirks and contribute to their collective success. After all, the accomplishments of their parents' flawless teamwork had set an illustrious precedent, earning them renown not only within Konoha but also among nations far and wide. It should come as no surprise, then, that their children inherited the same, if not greater, aptitude for collaboration and teamwork. For Shikamaru, it was far from surprising. With a nonchalant demeanor, Shikamaru remained unfazed by Ino's comments, confident in his abilities and ready to get on with being a shinobi and enjoying some time to nap. Under the leadership of Kuranaihi, teammate will be composed of Hinata Hayuga, Kiba Inuzuka, and Shino Aburam. As Ruka sensei unveiled the composition of teammate, Shino maintained his usual compass demeanor, his eyes concealed by his dark sunglasses. Kiba's enthusiastic grin and Akamaru's excited barking filled the air, while Hinata's expression held a mix of anticipation and mild disappointment. Shino, ever perceptive, noticed her subtle reaction and resolved to offer his support and encouragement. Since Team 3 is still active and operational, there is no requirement for any personnel replacements. Aruka sensei setting his clipboard aside, turned his attention towards his students, their expectant faces looking back at him. Taking a deep breath, he prepared to deliver his final words before they embarked on their respective journeys as Genin. His voice resonated with a mix of pride, wisdom, and a hint of nostalgia as he spoke. Now that I have announced the teams, I want to emphasize that I have full confidence in each and every one of you. I believe that you will all grow into exceptional shinobi, carrying the will of fire and determination of our village within you. From this moment onward, we will no longer be solely teachers and students, but comrades who support and rely on one another. I am excited to witness your progress and be a part of your journey, Haruka sensei conveyed with a heartfelt smile, eliciting a wave of smiles and nods from his students. Your squad leaders will be arriving shortly to gather their respective teams. Make sure you are prepared and ready when they arrive. Remember, this is the beginning of your journey as a team, and it's crucial to establish trust and cooperation from the very start. Work together, support each other, and always strive for improvement. Good luck, everyone, Iruka sensei announced, concluding his speech with a final encouraging tone. 
But those words, Hiruka-sensei walked towards the door, sliding it open with a gentle push. As he stepped out of the classroom, the students watched him depart, their anticipation growing as they prepared to meet their new squad leaders. The room filled with a mix of excitement, nervousness, and determination, as each student contemplated the challenges and adventures that awaited them in their journey as genin. They exchanged glances, ready to embark on this new chapter of their lives as ninjas, eager to prove themselves and forge unbreakable bonds with their teammates. P. Sasuke, we're on the same team. Isn't that great? Sakura exclaimed, her eyes sparkling with excitement as she leaned closer to Sasuke. Her enthusiasm was palpable, and she couldn't contain her joy at the prospect of working closely with him as teammates. The thought of spending more time together fueled her infatuation, making her heart flutter with anticipation. Sasuke, uninterested in Sakura's enthusiastic remark, remained stoic and distant. He didn't even bother acknowledging her presence or responding to her excitement. Although disappointed by his lack of response, Sakura knew deep down that gaining Sasuke's attention and admiration would be a difficult task, but she was determined to prove herself, hoping that someday Sasuke would recognize her efforts. Although, it's a shame we have Naruto on our team as well. He's such a loser. I mean he has lousy grades and can barely perform any jutsus. It's a wonder how he even graduated at all. I know what it is. He has no mother or father to teach him anything, that's why he's such an idiot. It's no wonder he has no friends. He was never taught manners. I mean who would ever want to be friends with someone like Hai? Automata rant, Sasuke's intense gaze bore into her, instantly silencing her. Sakura, enough, Sasuke snapped, his patience worn thin. Your constant rambling is starting to grate on me. You're annoying. Stop talking. Ignoring Sakura's shocked visage, he disregarded her completely and shifted his focus back to the window, paying no heed to her dismay. Stricken with a mix of shock, disbelief, and a deep sense of hurt, Sakura's expression crumbled. She lowered herself onto a seat, her hands instinctively covering her face as tears welled up and cascaded down her cheeks. Each tear carried the weight of her anguish as she wept, feeling the sting of Sasuke's words etching into her wounded heart. Overhearing Sakura and Sasuke's conversation, Naruto's heart sank as their words pierced deep into his being. The pain of Sakura's harsh remarks reverberated within him, causing a profound hurt. Though he was aware that Sakura didn't hold a particularly high opinion of him, he never imagined her thoughts to be so brutally disparaging. The realization left him wounded, grappling with the disbelief that someone he considered a friend could harbor such negativity towards him. Retreating within himself, Naruto turned his gaze away from the rest of the class, their collective astonishment palpable. The sheer cruelty of Sasuke's words toward Sakura and her immediate emotional breakdown left everyone in a state of pure disbelief. The classroom fell into a hushed silence as the impact of the scene weighed heavily on the hearts of those witnessing it, leaving them at a loss for words. Noticing Naruto's uncharacteristic retreat from the rest of the class, Hinata's concern deepened. It was highly unusual to see him hide away, especially considering his usual lively and attention-seeking nature. However, upon recalling Sakura's hurtful words about Naruto, especially his lack of family, it didn't take long for Hinata to piece together the reason behind his changed behavior. Filled with a surge of righteous anger, Hinata's own determination ignited. She personally knew how hard Naruto tried and witnessed his unwavering resilience in the face of adversity. With no one to turn to and no one to lend a helping hand when he stumbled, Naruto was forced to learn and survive on his own. Yet, he always managed to rise by himself time and time again when faced with hardship. To ridicule his indomitable spirit and undermine his progress struck a deep chord with Hinata. It was something she could not tolerate, even if it meant summoning the courage to step out of her shy demeanor and take a stand to rectify the situation. Sakura. The sound of her name being called pulled Sakura out of her despondent state, prompting her to raise her head from the desk. Blinking away the remnants of her tears, she locked eyes with Hinata, who was steadily approaching her. Hinata, defying everyone's expectations, summoned the courage to do something truly unexpected. D-H-W-A-C-K. Hinata's hand connected with Sakura's face with a resounding slap. Silence. The sudden stillness fell upon the entire classroom as all eyes turned towards Hinata, a normally shy and reserved individual, who had just delivered a resounding slap to Sakura. The collective gasps and dropped jaws spoke volumes of the sheer disbelief that hung in the air. It was an unexpected turn of events, one that added to the growing list of surprises that had unfolded throughout the day. Truly, it was a day filled with unexpected twists and turns. Sasuke himself wore an unmistakable expression of shock on his face, clearly taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. Naruto stood there, eyes wide and mouth agape, utterly astounded by Hinata's actions. Having heard Hinata's confrontation with Sakura, he turned around only to be completely caught off guard by the unexpected slap. 
a disbelief washed over him, struggling to comprehend that the same Hinata, who would faint at the mere sight of him, now displayed such audacity and determination to strike Sakura in front of the entire class. A wave of incredulity washed over Sakura, leaving her utterly stunned by the sudden turn of events. In a matter of seconds, she had transitioned from looking up at Hinata to experiencing an intense burning sensation on her right cheek. Before Sakura could utter a word, intending to question why Hinata had slapped her, she was abruptly interrupted by Hinata herself. You should not pass judgment on people you don't truly know or understand, Hinata stated firmly, her words carrying a resolute conviction. To do so is utterly ignorant and foolish. Appreciate the blessings of having a family you can call your own, who are there to lend a helping hand when you stumble. Not everyone is as fortunate as you are. Hinata's final words held a coldness to them, emphasizing the stark contrast between the privileged and the less fortunate. Naruto's eyes widened in astonishment at Hinata's words. Did she? Was she actually defending me? Similar thoughts raced through the minds of the entire class, mirroring Naruto's astonishment. Was Hinata actually defending the dead last? The collective surprise and speculation hung in the air as they tried to decipher the significance behind Hinata's unexpected act of support. Fortunately, before the situation could escalate any further, the door abruptly slid open, revealing a couple of individuals entering the classroom. Hinata, casting one final frosty gaze at Sakura, swiftly made her way back to her seat. Team 10, I am Asuma Siratobi, announced the newly introduced figure, his voice carrying authority and confidence. I will be your instructor as well as your squad leader. Follow me, he commanded, gesturing for them to follow him. The trio of Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji collectively turned their heads toward the source of the voice, their attention now fully captured by the speaker. Their eyes locked onto him, curiosity reflected in their expressions. But the towering stature, the man commanded attention as his presence filled the room. With piercing brown eyes, olive skin, and short, spiky black hair, he exuded an aura of determination. A well-groomed beard added a touch of ruggedness to his countenance. Clad in the customary Kanohan ninja uniform, he donned a flak jacket and sturdy shinobi sandals. The forehead protector proudly adorned his forehead, symbolizing his affiliation with the village. Around his waist, a sash prominently displayed the kanji for fire, an emblem of his loyalty. Complementing his attire, he wore a pair of black bangles and bandages that tightly wrapped around his sleeves and shins, serving as a testament to both his preparedness for battle and his experiences as a seasoned shinobi. Rising in unison, Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji swiftly left their seats and proceeded towards the classroom door, their steps aligned with their subsequently new teacher, ready to embark on their next journey together. Before exiting the classroom, Ino turned her gaze toward Sakura one last time. With a hint of mischief, she pulled down one eyelid and playfully stuck out her tongue, leaving behind a light-hearted yet mocking gesture as a parting message. Sakura responded with a dismissive HMPH, her expression reflecting a mixture of annoyance and indifference. After Team 10 had departed, a woman with captivating ruby-colored eyes and multiple bandages adorning her body stepped forward, taking center stage. Team 8, I am Karenhi Yue, announced the woman with a commanding presence, her voice carrying a mix of strength and reassurance. For the foreseeable future, I will serve as both your instructor and squad leader. Follow me, she commanded, beckoning them to follow her out of the classroom. Karenhi Yue possessed a slender figure and fair complexion. Her untamed black hair cascaded down to her upper back, while her eyes captivated with their striking crimson hue, enhanced by a distinct inner ring. She adorned herself with makeup, showcasing red lipstick and purple eyeshadow. Her attire comprised a unique ensemble, featuring a red mesh armor blouse that revealed only her right sleeve, leaving the left bare. The remainder of her clothing consisted of intricately patterned bandages resembling rose thorns, enveloping her hands and upper thighs, and serving as her signature style. Completing her look, she proudly wore her Kanoha headband on her forehead, along with traditional shinobi sandals. Hiba, Shino, and Hinata rose from their seats and trailed their newly assigned instructor, passing through the doorway. As her team had already left the room, Hinata couldn't resist stealing one last glance at Naruto, her eyes lingering on him for a fleeting moment before she joined the rest of her team, disappearing through the door. The once vibrant classroom, brimming with students and lively chatter, now lay in an eerie silence, devoid of any discernible sound save for the ticking of a clock. Gradually, Jonan instructors materialized one by one, claiming their respective teams and setting off to acquaint themselves with their fresh-faced students. Meanwhile, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura remained, lingering in the now-empty classroom, their frustration mounting as they teetered on the edge of strangling their elusive new teacher. Hours had slipped by with no sign of their supposed mentor, while all the other teams had already departed, seizing the opportunity to bond and familiarize themselves with their instructor. Perched together at a shared desk, the trio sought solace in their own idiosyncrasies as the hours crept by. 
Naruto, unable to keep still, fidgeted incessantly, his foot tapping away as if engaged in a race against time. Sakura lost in her own reverie, indulged in daydreams of Sasuke, while also momentarily stealing glances at Naruto throughout the two-hour wait. It was apparent she yearned to initiate a conversation, but found herself struggling to find the right way to approach him. In stark contrast, Sasuke remained rooted in his seat, his mind seemingly immersed in profound contemplation. Yet, for those observant enough, a slight furrow on his forehead hinted at his frustration, having wasted two precious hours with the dobe and the fangirl, accomplishing nothing but accumulating a growing annoyance. An uncomfortable tension enveloped the trio, courtesy of the earlier altercation, casting a shadow over their interactions. Sakura, bearing a conflicted expression, appeared poised to start a conversation with Naruto, her longing for communication evident. Naruto, however, seemed unusually distant, detached from his surroundings, as if enveloped in his own thoughts. Meanwhile, Sasuke's countenance displayed a mixture of annoyance and frustration, his demeanor reflecting a simmering sense of anger and irritation. The much-needed respite from the prevailing discomfort arrived when Sakura mustered the courage to turn to Naruto, breaking the tension as she called out to him, seeking his attention. Naruto, there's something important I need to talk to you about, Sakura uttered, her voice carrying a mix of earnestness and nervousness. Naruto's fidgeting ceased abruptly as he redirected his focus toward Sakura, his actions conveying a clear signal that she now had his undivided attention. What is it, Sakura? Sakura couldn't help but wince internally when Naruto addressed her as Sakura, instead of his usual affectionate Sakura-chan. The absence of that endearing term served as a stark reminder of the hurtful words she had uttered about him in front of their entire class. It was no surprise, then, that their interaction was now strained, making it all the more difficult for Sakura to proceed with what she intended to say next. Sakura took a deep breath, gathering her courage to address the elephant in the room. Naruto, I want to apologize for what I said earlier. It was completely wrong of me to make those judgments about you. Hinata was right, and I realize now that it was unfair and unjust. I'm really sorry. Her words held a sincere tone, laced with genuine remorse and a desire to make amends. Naruto's jaw dropped in utter astonishment, far beyond the realm of mere surprise. Was he imagining things, or was this truly the same Sakura who had launched hurtful insults at him only hours ago? The stark contrast between her previous behavior and the genuine apology she was now offering left him utterly taken aback, his mind reeling to make sense of this unexpected turn of events. Naruto scratched his cheek, a gesture born out of both awkwardness and stunned disbelief. Apologies had been a rarity in his short life, making this unfamiliar territory for him to navigate especially coming from Sakura, the very person who had caused him so much pain not too long ago. Despite the tumultuous emotions swirling within him, he recognized the sincerity behind her words and couldn't help but feel a deep sense of appreciation. Her apology meant more to him than she would ever realize, a gesture that touched him in ways he struggled to put into words. Naruto, mustering a hesitant smile that betrayed his underlying uncertainty, responded to her apology with a reassuring tone. No worries, Sakura-chan. It's all right. I've dealt with much worse. And he truly had, having faced countless challenges and adversity throughout his life. Yet, at that moment, he recognized the significance of Sakura's apology, grateful for her acknowledgement in a way that words couldn't fully convey. Sakura's heart sank, overwhelmed by a wave of guilt, as Naruto's words hit home. He was right, and it pained her to admit it. How many times had he endured ridicule and mockery? How many times had she, too, participated in belittling him? The weight of her actions weighed heavily on her conscience. Did he have anyone to rely on? Was he truly alone? Did he have the love and support of his parents like she did? These unanswered questions intensified Sakura's remorse, deepening her understanding of the pain she had unknowingly caused. The weight of reality settled heavily upon Sakura's heart. Naruto had always been on his own, devoid of any significant connections. She couldn't recall a single instance of him being surrounded by friends, let alone family members. The absence of those meaningful relationships in his life struck her with a sense of profound sadness. The thought of Naruto enduring the world's challenges without the support and companionship he deserved made Sakura acutely aware of her own shortcomings. The realization of how truly horrible she had been for belittling him precisely for his lack of those connections struck her with a profound sense of guilt. She had not only made fun of Naruto, but she had targeted an orphan who had already endured so much hardship in his life. The thought churned Sakura's stomach, filling her with a profound sense of sickness. How could she have stooped so low as to mock an orphan who was already battling against countless odds? The realization of her own audacity in ridiculing his sincere efforts to overcome adversity struck her like a blow to the chest. The depth of her own insensitivity and cruelty weighed heavily on her conscience, leaving her feeling disgusted with herself. Overwhelmed by a flood of emotions, Sakura's tears welled up uncontrollably, streaming down her cheeks as the weight of her past actions crashed upon her. 
The realization of all the terrible things she had said and done to Naruto finally pierced through her defenses, piercing her heart with searing pain. The magnitude of her cruelty, the hurtful words, and the actions that she had inflicted upon him, now echoed loudly in her mind. Unable to contain the immense guilt and remorse any longer, she broke down into uncontrollable sobs, consumed by the depths of her regret and longing for redemption. Naruto's voice filled with concern and distress as he witnessed Sakura's tears. His immediate reaction was one of worry, his heart aching at the sight of her pain. What's wrong, Sakura-chan? I didn't mean to make you cry. Are you alright? He asked urgently, his voice reflecting his genuine care for her well-being. Seeing her in tears, especially after he had expressed his forgiveness, puzzled and troubled him. His instinct to offer help and support kicked in as he anxiously asked, do you need help? What can I do? Sakura's tears intensified, her cries growing louder, as Naruto's genuine concern seeped into her wounded heart. The weight of her hurtful words and actions toward him bore down on her, fueling her overwhelming remorse. He still cares about me even though I have been nothing but a jerk and a bitch to him. Uncertain of how to comfort Sakura in her distress, Naruto's actions were driven by a genuine desire to provide solace. Awkwardly, he reached out and gently patted her back, offering a small gesture of emotional support. His gaze flickered to Sasuke, seeking guidance and solidarity in the face of this overwhelming situation. Sasuke, meeting Naruto's gaze, reciprocated with a shrug of his shoulders, a gesture that reflected his own uncertainty and lack of expertise in dealing with emotional situations, particularly those involving crying girls, especially fangirls like Sakura. Realizing that Sasuke wouldn't be of much help, Naruto redirected his attention toward Sakura, who continued to sob uncontrollably, her head buried in her arms on the desk. Determined to offer her comfort, Naruto approached her cautiously, his voice filled with empathy as he gently said, Sakura, it's alright. I'm here for you. He reached out to gently pat her back once more, hoping to convey a sense of solace and support. Naruto's genuine concern and unwavering support were evident in his words, as he tried his best to provide the solace and reassurance Akura desperately needed in that moment of vulnerability. Meanwhile, in the background, Sasuke, who had been silently observing the entire conversation between Naruto and Sakura, couldn't help but feel a mix of surprise and confusion. The image of Sakura, known for her strong dislike towards Naruto during their time in the academy, willingly apologizing to him was something he never expected to witness. That slap from Hinata must have done a number on her, Sasuke mused, his mind trying to make sense of Sakura's sudden change in behavior. As he observed Naruto's reaction to her apology, he couldn't help but be taken aback. The usually boisterous and exuberant Naruto appeared stunned, like a fish caught out of water. It was as if he had never experienced receiving an apology before in his life. The stark contrast between Naruto's usual demeanor and his vulnerability at that moment was truly surprising to Sasuke. It made him reflect on the depth of impact that Sakura's hurtful words must have had on Naruto, perhaps more than anyone realized. Sakura's tears didn't come as a surprise, her emotions often got the best of her. However, Naruto's perplexed reaction to receiving an apology and his evident struggle to comfort someone he harbored feelings for came as a genuine surprise. Despite his typically exuberant and outgoing nature, Naruto appeared unprepared for this particular situation. Sasu couldn't help but acknowledge the depth of Naruto's emotions and the vulnerability he displayed at that moment, shedding new light on his usually boisterous and carefree demeanor. Just as Sasuke was about to delve deeper into his thoughts, a door slid open, catching his attention. His gaze shifted toward the entrance, revealing a man with silver hair standing there. The sudden sound of a door sliding open broke the stillness in the room, grabbing the attention of both Naruto and Sakura. Naruto, who had been attempting to console Sakura, paused in his actions, while Sakura, her tear-stained face slowly regaining composure, turned her gaze towards the doorway. The man had entered the classroom completely, revealing his full form to the team as they got a clear view of him. Standing at an impressive height, the man possessed a mane of spiky silver hair that defied gravity. His eyes, reflecting an air of laziness and lethargy, were dark and piercing. The forehead protector he wore was slanted to the left, effectively concealing his left eye, while a mask covered the lower portion of his face. Clad in the standard Kanoha infantry attire, he donned a dark green flak jacket, complemented by dark blue pants. The long-sleeved blue shirt he wore boasted striking red circular swirls adorning each shoulder. Completing his look, he sported fingerless gloves adorned with metal plates on the back of his hands. After a few minutes of silent observation, the nameless man casually cast his gaze upon the trio, studying them intently. The weight of his silence hung in the air, creating an atmosphere of anticipation. Eventually, breaking the silence, he decided to speak, his words carefully chosen after his meticulous observation of the trio. Ah, my first impression of you three. Is that you are a bunch of idiots. Silence. 
in a rare alignment of opinions, Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura found themselves in complete agreement as they collectively harbored a strong dislike toward the man standing before them. The unidentified individual uttered once more, meet me atop the roof, before abruptly vanishing, leaving behind only the rustling of leaves as the sole evidence of his existence. Disenchanted by the lackluster disposition of the person he presumed would be his long-term instructor, Naruto jolted himself awake and swiftly hastened toward the rooftop. Having wiped away her tears, Sakura too began sprinting towards the roof, but not before peering back at Sasuke. Are you coming, Sasuke-kun? Sakura inquired. In response, Sasuke grunted before silently trailing behind Sakura. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura found themselves seated on a few steps, while their yet-to-be-named teacher perched on the rooftop's edge. Setting aside whatever he had been reading, the teacher requested that they each introduce themselves, taking turns. Sensei, what would you like to know? Sakura asked inquisitively. Hobbies, likes, dislikes, aspirations or dreams for the future. Something along those lines. Why don't you show us how it's done first, so we know how to do it? Naruto proposed, suggesting that seeing an example would aid their understanding. Deciding there was no harm in doing so, the man proceeded to introduce himself. I'm Kakashi Haddock, the now named Kakashi stated. The things I like and dislike, I don't feel like telling you that. My hobbies, well I have a lot of hobbies. As for my dreams for the future, I've never really thought about it. The deadpan gazes he received from the three greatly amused Kakashi, a fact revealed by the subtle upward curve of his lips. Of course, the three were oblivious to this since his mouth was concealed behind the mask he wore. Having spoken his piece, Kakashi gestured for Naruto to go. All right, Blondie, it's your turn, he remarked, prompting Naruto to share his introduction. All right. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto exclaimed with enthusiasm. I like instant ramen. I especially like the ramen at Ichiraku Ramen Aruka Sensei treats me too. I don't like how you have to wait three minutes after pouring hot water into the ramen. My hobbies are gardening and trying out new flavors of ramen and seeing which is better. It's all about ramen, the rest of the team thought with a deadpan look. And my dream for the future is to become. Naruto's words came to an abrupt halt, the uncertainty evident in his hesitation, as if he had lost clarity on his own aspirations. Sasuke and Sakura fixed their gaze upon Naruto, their faces displaying gobsmacked expressions that clearly revealed their shock and astonishment at what they were witnessing. The boy who had proclaimed his ambition of becoming Hokage every day since childhood was hesitating to say so now of all places. Sasuke and Sakura couldn't help but question if this was truly the same Naruto they had come to know since childhood. To become Hokage, Sasuke interjected, finishing Naruto's sentence on his behalf. All eyes turned toward Sasuke, who locked his gaze onto Naruto with an intense focus, yet a hint of confusion was also apparent in his expression. The room fell silent as everyone awaited Sasuke's next move or words. That's your dream, isn't it? To become the Hokage. Sasuke inquired, prodding Naruto when he received no reply. Collecting himself amidst the unusual turn of events and his own inner turmoil, Naruto responded with a forced chuckle and said, why yeah, of course. I'm going to become the greatest Hokage ever. Believe it. Though his words were filled with determination, there was a discernible tension beneath his laughter, hinting at the complex emotions he was grappling with beneath his facade. Sasuke, Kakashi, and even Sakura could easily discern that Naruto's response was far from genuine. The sudden attention from Sasuke made it apparent that his words were forced, but the three decided to let it go, at least for the time being. However, there was an unmistakable unease in Sasuke's expression, as if something had transpired that shouldn't have. Sakura regarded Naruto with a bewildered gaze, as if he had been replaced by someone else entirely. As for Kakashi, his lone visible eye narrowed slightly, a silent indication of his perceptive nature, observing the situation with a hint of concern. Um, what an intriguing young man he has become, Kakashi softly mused to himself. Though I suppose I should report this new piece of information to the Hokage, he contemplated, realizing the importance of the situation and acknowledging his duty to inform the village's leader. Breaking free from his reverie, Kakashi redirected his focus to Sakura and extended a pointed finger toward her. All right, Pinky, you're next. Collecting herself and pushing aside her astonishment at Naruto's unexpected hesitation, Sakura regained her composure and redirected her focus toward her own introduction. All right. I'm Sakura Haruno. Sakura stammered slightly, her cheeks tinged with a faint blush. As for what I like. Or rather, the person I like. She trailed off, her voice filled with a mix of shyness and bashfulness, as she stole furtive glances at Sasuke. And my hobbies are. He, she giggled, hinting at hidden interests she couldn't help but find exciting and my dream for the future is. Sakura's voice grew more animated, her excitement palpable. T. She squealed, completely absorbed in her own vivid fantasies. 
The Kashi let out an audible sigh, his expression tinged with a mixture of exasperation and disappointment, as he assessed Sakura's apparent fixation on matters of the heart, rather than her shinobi training. Girls her age are more interested in boys rather than their shinobi training, he thought silently, his disappointment veiled behind a mask of calmness. Recognizing adolescence's common distractions and priorities, Kakashi couldn't help but feel a sense of concern for Sakura's focus and dedication to her path as a shinobi. And what do you dislike? Ino Pig. Sakura exclaimed, her voice filled with a mix of annoyance and resentment. However, as her eyes met Naruto's gaze and the memories of their previous interactions flooded her mind, her expression morphed into one of shame and guilt. Realizing the hurtful nature of her words, Sakura decided not to finish her sentence, a sign of newfound maturity and consideration for Naruto's feelings. Sasuke's eyes briefly darted toward Sakura, memories of the incident in the classroom resurfacing for an instant. However, just as swiftly as his gaze had shifted, he redirected his attention back to Kakashi, maintaining an air of aloofness and detachment. Naruto's expression shifted from surprise to a mix of relief and happiness as he noticed Sakura refraining from mentioning his name. The sincerity of her actions, both the apology and now this, touched Naruto deeply. For the first time in a long time, he felt a glimmer of hope flicker within him, as if the tides of fortune were finally turning in his favor. Bakashi's eyebrow curled up, a subtle indication of his intrigue. As he was about to shift his attention to Sasuke, intending to prompt him for his introduction, Sakura's voice interjected once more, interrupting the flow of the moment and drawing all eyes back to her. Sorry, Kakashi-sensei, but I have one more dream I'd like to share, Sakura spoke up, her tone reflecting a newfound conviction. Interest peaked, Kakashi directed his attention back to Sakura and inquired, what is it? I aspire to become a powerful Kanoichi who can see beyond rumors and judgments, Sakura stated, her voice brimming with conviction. My dream is to become someone who seeks the truth firsthand, unaffected by the opinions of others. I see. Naruto, Kakashi, and even Sasu found themselves taken aback by her newfound dream. They had doubted her motivation, determination, and even her own yearning to grow stronger for the sake of herself. However, it appears that their assumptions were mistaken. Bakashi, concealing a subtle, proud smile beneath his mask, mused, perhaps she isn't as incapable as I had initially believed. Sasuke, too, found himself perceiving Sakura in a new light. Her unexpected revelation of her dream had a subtle yet profound impact on him. Although it was a modest change, devoid of grandiosity or fanfare, a glimmer of respect for her started to take root in Sasuke. Sakura's newfound pursuit of her own dream brought joy to Naruto. It wasn't just because she had shifted her focus from simply just Sasuke, but because he genuinely celebrated her path towards becoming the formidable Kanoichi he had always known she was capable of becoming. Directing his attention toward Sasuke, Kakashi shifted his focus to the final prospective member of his potential team. And finally, we have Mr. Brooding, he quipped, a touch of amusement evident in his voice. Meeting Kakashi's gaze, Sasuke's voice resonated with a deliberate low cadence that belied his young age. My name is Sasuke Che. I hate a lot of things, and I don't particularly like anything. What I have is not a dream, because I will make it a reality. I'm going to restore my clan and destroy a certain someone. Gee, I hope he doesn't mean me. Naruto thought, looking a little green at the idea. Oh wow, Sasuke is so cool, Sakura gushed, her eyes sparkling with admiration as she absorbed every word of his impressive speech. It's just as I anticipated, Kakashi acknowledged inwardly, though the sight of such profound hatred in someone so young left him feeling saddened, regardless of his prior expectations. Good. Each one of you possesses uniqueness and harbors personal goals to strive for, Kakashi affirmed, acknowledging the individuality within his team. Our first mission as a team will be held tomorrow. Naruto, ever brimming with energy and curiosity, unleashed a barrage of questions upon Kakashi regarding the nature of their upcoming missions. Nina, what kind of mission are we going to do? He eagerly inquired. Are we going to rescue a princess? Or maybe even a king? The mission, Kakashi started, his voice calm and compassed, will require the collective participation of all four of us. Well, what is it? Naruto eagerly pressed, his curiosity reaching its peak. It's a survival exercise, Kakashi disclosed, his voice tinged with a hint of mystery, leaving the team curious about the nature and demands of the upcoming mission. The survival exercise. Sakura asked, her curiosity evident in her voice. What is the purpose behind it? The purpose of this exercise is to determine whether or not the three of you will progress as Jen and a return to the academy, Kakashi explained, his voice carrying a serious undertone, highlighting the pivotal nature of the upcoming survival exercise. What? Naruto and Sakura exclaimed in a mixture of shock and outrage, their voices echoing with disbelief. Sasuke, though he maintained a compassed facade, was not exempt from the surge of outrage. 
While his reaction was less vociferous than Naruto and Sakura's, his eyes betrayed a mix of shock and anger. I thought we were already genin, what was the purpose of graduating from the academy then? Sakura questioned, her voice laced with confusion and frustration, seeking clarification on the apparent contradiction between their previous graduation and the current revelation. The graduation exam served as a preliminary selection process to identify potential candidates for genin. However, the test you will be undertaking is far more rigorous and consequential than that of a mere academy examination. It is a make-or-break evaluation that will determine whether you remain in the ninja program or elevated to the rank of genin, Kakashi clarified, his tone conveying the high stakes and significance of the forthcoming test. That's not fair. Naruto voiced his complaint loudly, his frustration reverberating in his words. Sakura and Sasuke silently shared his sentiment, their agreement evident in their expressions, even though they chose not to vocalize it like Naruto. Their opinions don't hold sway here. That's the way it is. I hold the power to decide whether you pass or fail, Kakashi asserted firmly with unwavering authority. Be present at the designated location at 5 a.m. sharp. Come prepared with whatever is necessary to prove yourselves in this exam. Having uttered those words, Kakashi shifted his attention away from them, signaling his intention to depart. However, he halted momentarily, turning back to face the trio who appeared visibly unsettled by the abrupt weight of the impending examination that would shape their future as shinobi. Oh, by the way, I would forego breakfast tomorrow if I were you. If you don't, you'll puke. Kakashi quipped, a playful glint in his eye as he flashed his signature eye smile. Donna, Kakashi bid his farewell with a slight wave before seamlessly vanishing from sight, utilizing the Shunshin no Jutsu to disappear in an instant. In the wake of Kakashi's disappearance, a hushed silence fell upon the three remaining individuals, leaving only the faint echoes of bustling activity from the streets below to break the stillness. No words were spoken as Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke absorbed the weight of the upcoming challenge, each lost in their own thoughts, their shared silence echoing their apprehension and anticipation. Without uttering a single word of farewell, Sasuke abruptly rose from his position on the rooftop and swiftly departed in the same manner they had arrived, his determination evident in every step. It was apparent that he had chosen to retreat into solitude, fully immersing himself in preparations for the upcoming test, leaving Naruto and Sakura to process his departure in the lingering silence. Upon witnessing Sasuke's departure, Sakura promptly followed in his footsteps, an obvious hope of spending time with him. Wait, Sasuke-kun. Is there somewhere you want to go together? Sakura called out in a rush, her words trailing after an already distant Sasuke. Sasuke remained resolute, never pausing or glancing back at Sakura as he delivered a curt and devoid of emotion response, no. He was gone before she could ask again. Feeling a sense of disappointment lingering within her, Sakura shifted her attention towards Naruto, expecting his usual cheerful invitation to spend time together. However, to her surprise yet again, she was met with an intense and unusually focused expression on his face. It was a stark contrast to his typically unfocused nature, piquing her curiosity and stirring a mix of emotions within her. Recalling her prior statements and keeping her recent blunders in mind, Sakura felt an earnest determination to improve, not just for her own sake, but also for Naruto's sake. With this heartfelt promise fueling her steps, she set out towards Naruto, resolute in her quest for personal growth, and this was the first step in making that goal a reality. Hey, Naruto, she called out in an attempt to capture his attention, but he remained oblivious to her presence. Naruto. Hello. Anyone home? Naruto. As if suddenly awakened by the sound of her voice, Naruto jolted out of his dreamlike trance and shifted his attention towards Sakura. Huh? Don't hummy. You were totally spaced out for a few seconds. I had to call your name three times, Sakura exclaimed, her arms crossed irritably over her chest. My bad, Sakura-chan, Naruto sheepishly apologized, rubbing the back of his head in embarrassment. Seeing she finally had his attention, she waved off Naruto's momentary lapse with a dismissive gesture. It's alright. I was actually wondering if you'd be interested in training together now that we're a team, Sakura suggested, her tone warm and inviting. Naruto's face lit up as if Christmas had arrived early. Wait, seriously, Sakura-chan? He exclaimed, unable to contain his excitement. Aware of Naruto's likely assumptions, Sakura swiftly intervened by landing a harsh and devastating punch to his face, though considerably softer than her customary blows from the past. Don't get the wrong idea. Ouch. Why did you have to go and hit me? Naruto cried out in pain as he got back on his feet, nursing his cheek that had borne the brunt of Sakura's punch. Forgetting the wrong idea, you idiot. Listen, whether we like it or not, we're a team now. I just thought it would be good for us to get to know each other better, Sakura explained, her frustration mixed with a genuine desire for camaraderie. Naruto's expression transformed into one of pleasant surprise upon hearing Sakura's admission. 
Despite the challenges it might entail, he shared her sentiment of working together, even if it meant teaming up with Sasuke. However, he hadn't anticipated Sakura initiating the topic herself. That sounds like a great idea, Sakura-chan. Naruto exclaimed joyfully, fully embracing the suggestion. The smile of happiness and relief graced Sakura's face as she saw Naruto wholeheartedly embracing her proposal. Shifting her gaze to the right, she noticed the sun beginning to set, casting a warm glow and signaling the approach of night. Great. I'm sure Sasuke-kun will join us sooner or later. I'm heading home for the day. See you tomorrow for the test, Naruto, Sakura said, her tone brimming with optimism. With that, she walked away from the doorway they had entered to access the rooftop, making her way toward her own destination. Taking note of the sun's gradual descent as well, Naruto made the decision to start his return journey to his crappy apartment, recognizing that it was getting late. Leaping down from the rooftop, Naruto landed on the road below and began trudging along the road towards his meager apartment, a familiar routine. Ignoring the hushed whispers and disdainful glances that followed him, as they often did, he pressed on. While he despised the judgment and hostility, he had grown accustomed to it over time, although it nodded his very being. After a brief walk, Naruto reached his apartment complex and proceeded to his own unit. As he approached his apartment, he couldn't help but notice the unchanged state of his living space, still characterized by its dilapidated appearance. Rust on the door and bent rails serving as a reminder of its less-than-ideal condition. Pushing open the door, he navigated through the interior, making his way to the bathroom that desperately yearned for a remodel as he prepared himself for bed. Following a thorough teeth brushing session and a shower accompanied by water that was lukewarm, Naruto selected his nighttime attire. He opted for a loose fitting grey buttoned up shirt and pants, complemented by a whimsical black and white nightcap that resembled the hat of an elf. With his choice of pajamas in place, Naruto finally settled into his bed, ready to embrace the comfort of rest. Uncertain about the outcome of the upcoming test for him and his team, Naruto couldn't help but feel a mix of anticipation and worry. Alongside the anticipation and worry, there was an undeniable surge of excitement coursing through him. This was his long-awaited opportunity to show his capabilities. With fervent hope, Naruto yearned for their success, not only to evade the discouraging prospect of returning to the academy, but also to validate their progress and showcase their true worth as shinobi. Naruto allowed himself to be gently carried away by the currents of sleep, his mind swirling with dreams and hopes for what tomorrow would bring. As the darkness enveloped him, his consciousness gradually surrendered, leaving behind the worries of the day. In the comforting embrace of darkness, Naruto's thoughts and aspirations melded together, guiding him into a state of restful slumber, where dreams and hopes intertwined until they became all he knew. The gentle touch of a sunbeam graced Naruto's face, rousing him from his slumber. He let out a brief yawn, his mind still foggy, before rising from his disheveled bed and beginning to ready himself for the important day ahead. His apartment held no remarkable qualities, being rather unimpressive in nature. It was a small dwelling with walls that displayed signs of rust and an array of cracks spanning its entirety. Patchwork sections adorned the walls, while the doors displayed signs of age, marked with visible cracks along their frames. The floors bore scars of wear and tear, with faded paint and minor blemishes. Uneven lighting fixtures and shingles added to the lackluster ambience, and the availability of electrical outlets was sparse throughout the entire space. Aside from the disorder created by his own lazy and disorganized lifestyle. Evident from the presence of noodle cups, trash bags, clothes, scrolls, books, and various other discarded items strewn across his room. The apartment offered a moderately comfortable and decent living arrangement for an orphan, particularly one burdened with the role of the Kyubi's jailer. Comparatively, it fared much better than the homes or shelters endured by other orphans. He supposed he owed his thanks to the third Hokage for granting him the opportunity to reside in this apartment, sparing him from the hardships of life on the streets like many other orphans faced. Making his way to the bathroom, Naruto twisted the faucet handle, causing a burst of cold water to gush out. He allowed the chilly stream to flow into his palms before splashing it onto his face, jolting himself awake from the remnants of grogginess. After drying his face, he reached for his toothbrush, applied a dab of toothpaste onto its bristles, and diligently brushed his teeth. Once he had thoroughly cleaned his teeth, he expelled the foam by spitting it out before reaching for a cup, which he promptly filled with water and consumed to rinse his mouth. Swirling the water around his mouth to remove any traces of toothpaste, he spat it out, ensuring his mouth was free from any residue. Satisfied with his dental hygiene, Naruto made his way back to his bedroom to change into a new set of clothes. Upon opening his closet, Naruto selected the garments he intended to wear and proceeded to dress himself. Taking a few minutes to put on each item, he swiftly moved on to his pouch, a repository for all his essential tools. Inside, he meticulously organized shurikens, smoke bombs, explosive tags, scrolls, and an array of weapons tailored for combat. 
After ensuring that his arsenal was securely fastened, Naruto's gaze shifted toward his headband, a symbol of his loyalty to Konoha. Pausing for a moment, Naruto locked eyes with the headband, contemplating its profound meaning and the role it played in shaping his future. Wearing the headband symbolized his unwavering allegiance to Konoha and Konoha alone, yet doubts began to creep in. The revelation of housing a literal demon fox within himself, coupled with the resulting universal animosity, would do that to you. Hesitating for the barest of minutes, Naruto firmly fastened the headband around his forehead, securing it firmly with a tight knot. As he stared at his reflection in the mirror, he absorbed the image of himself, dressed fully and sporting the newly adorned headband on his forehead. A smile of satisfaction graced his lips as he admired his appearance, recognizing that he looked pretty good. With his vibrant yellow blonde hair spiked up, striking blue eyes, and the iconic three whisker markings etched on his cheeks, he easily stood out in a crowd. He donned an eye-catching orange and blue jacket featuring a white collar, a left-sided white swirl adorned with a tassel, and a bold red Uzumaki crest displayed proudly on the back. His outfit was completed by orange pants that housed a shuriken holster on his right knee, accompanied by a pair of blue sandals. And, of course, he wore his new blue headband, a symbol of his achievement from the academy, given to him by Aruka. After firmly closing the door behind him and taking a moment to lock it, Naruto set off towards the designated third training ground, where Kakashi-sensei had instructed them to meet for their test. As the dawn was yet to break, casting a shroud of darkness upon the sky, the world outside remained tranquil, interrupted only by the resonating croaks of crickets and the melodious chirping of birds. However, it seemed that a handful of early risers from the village had already begun their day, diligently preparing their shops and embracing the stillness before the bustling commotion would ensue. If Kakashi-sensei hadn't specifically mentioned the 5 a.m. rendezvous at the training grounds for the test, he would have continued to blissfully sleep like a log. Mornings were not his strong suit, and even after going to bed early the night before, he still felt the weight of fatigue. He couldn't help but wonder if Sasuke and Sakura handled the early wake-up call better than he did. The mere thought of his teammates, Team 7 as a whole, was far from pleasant for him. Sakura Haruno, the preeminent Kinoichi of their generation, excelled in academic pursuits, earning top marks in all exams. However, her physical prowess left much to be desired. Naruto found himself drawn to Sakura, though he couldn't pinpoint a specific reason for his fondness or determine if it was genuine. It could be attributed to her enchanting hair, reminiscent of blooming cherry blossoms, or perhaps it stemmed from the rivalry he shared with Sasuke. Ugh, the mere mention of Sasuke stirred up thoughts that he preferred to keep at bay. Sasuke Ichiha, the presumed prodigy and the last of his prestigious clan, garnered accolades from their classmates. However, Naruto held a different perspective. To him, Sasuke was nothing more than an arrogant jerk with a duck butt for hair. Despite his personal disdain, Naruto begrudgingly acknowledged that Sasuke surpassed him, at least for the time being. Sasuke boasted top marks and excelled in various areas, particularly displaying exceptional accuracy in shuriken jutsu, evident by his multiple bullseye hits during the graduation exam. Naruto, on the other hand, attributed his own modest success to a combination of luck and limited skill, managing to hit a few bullseyes along the way. Naruto regarded Sasuke as his rival, perceiving him as everything he himself was not. Sasuke possessed the desirable looks, the exceptional skills, and garnered admiration not only from their classmates, but also from the majority of the village. Even Sakura harbored an intense infatuation for Sasuke, which weighed somewhat heavily on Naruto's heart when he dwelled on it. That train of thought led him back to Sakura, and while he held an affinity for her, he couldn't overlook her negative qualities. She exhibited an intense fangirl obsession, bordering on fanatical, particularly when it came to Sasuke. Despite her intelligence, it seemed to dissipate whenever Sasuke was in her presence. A phenomenon he couldn't comprehend. Moreover, her penchant for belittling him with the label of idiot and subjecting him to constant physical abuse made it difficult for him to harbor any genuine liking for her, be it platonic or romantic. However, the events of yesterday revealed a different side of Sakura. Sakura's true character emerged from beneath her fangirl exterior, revealing a well of kindness and untapped potential as a formidable Kinoichi. It was a glimmer of hope that allowed Naruto to see her in a different light and recognize the latent qualities that could shape her into an exceptional individual. With Sakura and Sasuke as his teammates, Naruto pondered the feasibility of their successful completion of missions. The reality that they hardly knew their new sensei added to his skepticism, leaving the notion of an efficient and cohesive team feeling like nothing more than a distant daydream. His train of thought was abruptly cut short as he caught wind of hushed conversations, filled with thinly veiled contempt and outright hatred, directed towards him. How could the Lord Hokage allow that brat to graduate? That thing is nothing more than a monster. And nearby shopkeepers whispered words rang out with a mix of shock and disdain as they shared their contemptuous opinion with a customer. Exactly. 
The customer replied, their voice filled with agreement. What if that thing is secretly plotting to amass power and launch a devastating attack to end the village for good? We can't trust it. Their words resonated with fear and suspicion, heightening the atmosphere of distrust surrounding Naruto. What was Lord Hokage even thinking? Hissed another customer, joining the conversation with an added tone of frustration. The sentiment of disbelief and questioning of the decisions of the village's leader further fueled the growing disapproval towards Naruto. Monster, an unknown civilian whispered venomously from behind, casting an ominous shadow of judgment upon Naruto's back. Demon. A random shinobi nearly shouted at Naruto, their words filled with scorn and contempt. Beast. That thing. Freak. He should just go and die. It would do all of us a favor. The venomous words were laced with pure malice and uttered with a heartless disregard for Naruto's well-being. As Naruto made his way through the village, the whispers of contempt and disdain grew louder, their words echoing with increasing intensity. Each passing moment brought forth more spiteful remarks, fueling the flames of anger within him. His hands clenched tightly, knuckles turning white, and tremors of unbridled rage surged through his body. The weight of the constant hatred and prejudice weighed heavily on his shoulders, leaving him with an overwhelming sense of injustice. Why was it always him? Why, in the depths of his frustration, did he have to bear the brunt of such unwarranted hostility? Why, damn it. Naruto pressed forward towards his destination, his fists clenched, undeterred by the persistent whispers swirling around him. Trying to overcome the hate and resentment inadvertently instilled by the villagers, Naruto consciously redirected his attention to anything other than the negative emotions he harbored for them. Instead, he focused on something more positive. The delectable taste of his beloved Raymond. He reminisced about his cherished moments at Ichiraku Raymond, relishing the mouthwatering sensation that enveloped him whenever Iruka sensei treated him to a bowl. Iruka sensei. Upon realizing that the third Hokage, whom he regarded as a surrogate grandfather, didn't live up to his idealized image, Naruto couldn't help but wonder if the same applied to Iruka sensei. Did Iruka sensei deceive him too, manipulating their bond by using lies as a means to establish trust? Were there hidden truths that Iruka sensei kept from him, mirroring the actions of the third Hokage? Was Aruka sensei's affection for him merely a facade, a cleverly orchestrated pretense for the sake of a hidden mission? A ruse concocted for the sake of deceiving him. Shaking his head furiously, Naruto banished any negative thoughts about the one person he knew truly cared for him. No, in his most desperate moments, struggling to find enough food and possessing nothing more than the clothes on his back, with no one to offer solace or even acknowledge his existence, it was Aruka sensei alone who extended a helping hand. He imparted knowledge, provided nourishment, and, above all, he cared. He showed kindness and compassion towards him, the alleged embodiment of the Kaiubi, when no one else bothered. Despite the early hiccups the two had, where Aruka sensei struggled to overcome his past traumas and perceive him as an ordinary individual, Aruka sensei gradually became one of Naruto's few precious people. Aruka sensei accomplished what others couldn't or wouldn't. He saw Naruto as a human being, rather than merely the Kaiubi, for that was what he was, a human being that was forced to harbor a demon for the sake of the village. Despite harboring deep resentment and dark emotions towards the village and its residents, Iruka sensei remained the singular individual in whom Naruto had absolute faith, knowing that he could confide in him without hesitation and rely on him with his very life. The mere recollection of the cherished moments shared with Iruka sensei was enough to calm Naruto's turbulent emotions, taming his anger to a mere flicker of annoyance instead of an overwhelming blaze. Temporarily disregarding the upcoming exam amidst his state of fury and indignation caused by the villagers' cruel comments, Naruto's thoughts shifted back to his fellow teammates, who would also be participating in the examination. He was speculative if nothing else of the notion of a teamwork-oriented exam involving Sasuke and Sakura. He and Sasuke had an intense rivalry that drove each other bonkers. Well, maybe it drove him bonkers. Sasuke never seemed to acknowledge that he existed, let alone remotely his rival. The bastard. So what if the rivalry was one-sided, who cares? The fact of the matter is that he and Sasuke were not a suitable match as a team. Heck, even Shikamaru, notorious for his laziness, would readily acknowledge this as fact. The day when such a pairing would work together was the day when the first Hokage came back to life and frolicked in a pink dress. His mind returned to Sakura. Even though she had gone through considerable changes, she remained as tumultuous and emotionally unpredictable as ever. Her infatuation with Sasuke was still as strong as ever as well, however, despite a change. That disappointed him as it meant that winning her attention, let alone her affection, would require a relentless struggle. He had a better chance of captivating a log. Speaking of logs, he saw three positioned ahead in the training ground. The third training ground resided within the confines of Kanoha, encompassing a specific plot of land. The scenery presents a picturesque view of majestic mountains, complemented by a sprawling and profound river, flanked by lush and verdant forests on both banks. 
Nestled within a serene glade, one can find three stumps neatly arranged in a row. Beneath them rests the memorial stone, a meticulously carved structure shaped like a gleaming kunai, which serves as a poignant reminder of the village's history. Fortuitously, he arrived at the training ground just in time to witness Sasuke and Sakura making their way toward it. Sasuke stood upright, casually leaning against a tree, while Sakura sat nearby, her back comfortably supported by the trunk of another tree. The fatigue on both Sasuke and Sakura was apparent, although Sasuke managed to conceal it adeptly. Sakura, on the other hand, struggled to stay awake, rubbing her tired eyes persistently, in a futile attempt to alleviate her weariness. Even with the assistance of a tree, she struggled to maintain an upright posture, her body constantly slacking to the right. Despite Sasuke's commendable efforts to hide his tiredness, faint bags under his eyes and his slight reliance on the tree for support, subtly betrayed his weariness. Naruto, unfortunately, fared no better. Despite splashing water on his face before leaving his apartment in hopes of rousing himself, it proved futile. His body betrayed him, as his eyelids involuntarily fluttered open and closed in a desperate attempt to stay awake. Slouching and growing increasingly fatigued, the allure of the ground beneath him seemed irresistible. Recognizing that standing was no longer an option, and noticing Kakashi Sensei's absence despite his strict declaration of a 5 a.m. sharp gathering, Naruto opted to seek solace beside a nearby tree, where he could find respite in a seated position. The next few minutes transpired in utter silence, devoid of any conversation or conflict, as the trio was too exhausted to engage in any activity other than resting while anticipating Kakashi Sensei's arrival. The quietude of the surroundings and the serenity of nature provided their sole companionship as they patiently awaited their sensei's appearance. Eventually, he would show. As daybreak emerged, the veil of night receded, yielding to the luminous glow of the sun. Pristine clouds adorned the sky, gracefully gliding across its expanse, while the sun radiated its brilliance, transforming the previously darkened canopy into a vivid azure expanse. Three hours. Three whole hours they waited and he had yet to make an appearance. If it wasn't evident from the tick marks adorning Naruto and Sakura's faces, the disappearance of Sasuke's usual stoicism made it abundantly clear just how annoyed and frustrated they were. Unlike their previous weariness, the trio now exuded intense levels of vexation and annoyance. To put it simply, they were absolutely livid. Yo. With a lazy wave towards his students, Kakashi leisurely strolled towards the training grounds, conveying through his body language and facial expressions that he had just emerged from a blissful and satisfying slumber. You're late. Naruto and Sakura exclaimed, their faces etched with expressions that went far beyond mere irritation. Mama, you see, a black cat crossed my path, and as you know, it's considered bad luck. So, naturally, I had to take a different route, Kakashi explained, humor present in his voice. As Kakashi took note of his students' expressions, it became apparent that not only were they skeptical of his explanation, but they also failed to share in his amusement. The smug and self-satisfied eye smile he wore only served to reveal the playfulness behind his words. However, witnessing their distressed and irritated faces only heightened Kakashi's amusement, and if they managed to pass the upcoming test, it would undoubtedly become his newfound favorite pastime. The anticipation filled him with delight, and he eagerly looked forward to it. Huh, tough crowd, Kakashi remarked, a hint of lightheartedness in his tone. Clearing his throat and coughing into his hands to regain his bearings, Kakashi proceeded towards the three stumps. He placed his bag on the ground and retrieved an alarm clock, placing it precisely on the top of the middle stump. All right, the clock has been set for noon. His announcement was met with three sets of puzzled expressions, each displaying a mixture of confusion and bewilderment. Putting aside the confusion etched on their faces, Kakashi reached into his belongings and produced two bells, both linked together by a single vibrant red thread. The day's test, Kakashi announced, giving a jingle to the bells for emphasis, is for you to snatch these bells from me before noon. He paused, allowing the weight of his words to sink in. Those who fail to succeed will go hungry, missing out on lunch. They. Sakura and Naruto exclaimed simultaneously, their voices filled with a mixture of shock and incredulity. Just to make it crystal clear, Kakashi clarified, a touch of dark amusement permeating his voice, you'll be tied to the stump while I leisurely consume my lunch right in front of you. The synchronized grumbling of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura's stomachs echoed through the air, serving as a testament to their collective realization. The reason behind their breakfast prohibition became abundantly clear. They were intentionally kept hungry for this very test. Wait, Kakashi-sensei, Sakura questioned with a hint of confusion, why are there only two bells when there are three of us? Judging by the expectant expression on Kakashi's face, it was evident that he had already foreseen such a question coming. Well Kakashi trailed off, a mischievous glint in his eye, that's because only two of you will be able to pass this test. What? 
Undeterred by their indignant reactions, Kakashi proceeded to explain, one of you will be bound to the stump, and whoever that unfortunate person is will fail the test and be forced to return to the academy. Naruto and Sakura shared a collective gulp, their anxiety palpable as they absorbed the gravity of Kakashi's revelation. On the other hand, Sasuke's countenance took on a heightened seriousness, signifying his deeper understanding of the challenge that lay ahead and the consequences should he fail. It could be just one of you, or perhaps all three, Kakashi elaborated, his voice resonating with the weight of their individual skills and determination to become shinobi. You're free to utilize your shurikens, kunais, and any other tools at your disposal in this test. As he clenched the dangling bells tightly in his fist, Kakashi's gaze bore no trace of the laziness they had grown accustomed to witnessing. If you do not come at me with intent to kill, then you have no hope in taking these bells from me. Kakashi declared in a grave and matter-of-fact tone, his expression devoid of any earlier traces of humor. He was deadly serious. Sakura voiced her immediate concern for their sensei's safety, unable to hold back her worry. But, Kakashi-sensei, that's too risky. You could get seriously injured, or even worse. Kakashi nonchalantly shrugged his shoulders, as if implying that Sakura's concerns were trivial and unworthy of worry. Well, I suppose we'll find out, won't we? He retorted with a hint of amusement, seemingly undeterred by the potential risks involved. Witnessing their sensei's nonchalant attitude despite urging them to approach with lethal intent, Naruto wanted to see just where all that confidence was coming from. Swiftly retrieving two shurikens from his pouch, Naruto launched them towards Kakashi, using them as a diversionary tactic. While the shurikens distracted Kakashi, Naruto instantaneously unsheathed his kunai from its holster and lunged at his sensei, his every move driven by the intent to inflict harm rather than to take his life. Without even bothering to take a single step, Kakashi effortlessly snatched the two incoming shurikens between his index and middle fingers. In a display of incredible speed, he swiftly vanished from sight, leaving the three individuals unable to perceive his rapid movement. Mama, don't be so hasty. I haven't even had the opportunity to give the signal to begin yet. Perched atop Naruto, Kakashi idly twirled the two shurikens he had effortlessly intercepted earlier. Meanwhile, Naruto found himself pressed against the ground, his stomach facing downwards, and deprived of both his kunai and the ability to move freely. In a mere instant, Kakashi had disarmed Naruto, subdued him, and even found the leisure to rest his weight upon Naruto's back, all while retaining his hold on the captured shurikens. Sasuke and Sakura involuntarily retreated in shock, their faces etched with disbelief. Witnessing Naruto being effortlessly and swiftly subdued left them utterly taken aback. While Naruto was certainly no prodigy, he was no slouch either. Yet, Kakashi's effortless takedown served as a stark revelation, impressing upon Sasuke and Sakura the true magnitude of the opponent they were about to confront. Unbelievable. I didn't even see him move. So this is the strength of a jonin. Relinquishing his hold on Naruto, Kakashi allowed him to rise, giving him a brief moment to gather himself. Turning towards Naruto, he returned the shurikens and kunai to their rightful owner before addressing him directly. Despite your hastiness, Naruto, I commend your willingness to strike with lethal intent, Kakashi praised, causing Naruto to blush in response to the unexpected compliment. That's good. That means it is crucial if you want to pass this test. Kakashi then redirected his attention to the two onlookers. Sasuke, Sakura. Sakura instinctively straightened her posture, her voice trembling as she responded, why yes, Kakashi-sensei. Sasuke, on the other hand, gazed at Kakashi with a newfound spark of excitement in his eyes. This is the level of dedication and resolve that is required of you if you wish to obtain these bells, Kakashi declared, retrieving the bells and holding them up near his face for added emphasis. You must approach me with the intent to kill. It's do or die time now. Do you understand? Kakashi's authoritative tone left no room for ambiguity, demanding a response from his students. Initially gripped by hesitation, Sakura's mind swirled with shock and apprehension regarding the potential implications of the test for her and her teammates. However, in that crucial moment, Sakura recollected the solemn vow she had made to become a formidable Kanoichi, not just for herself, but for the sake of her team as well. Retreating now would only brand her as a coward and a hypocrite, failing to uphold her commitment. Fueled by a renewed surge of determination, Sakura responded with confidence, her voice resonating with conviction. Yes. I understand, Kakashi-sensei. Sasuke's excitement was palpable, having relentlessly trained for years since the night that man had robbed him of everything he held dear. With each passing day, he had dedicated himself to honing his skills, with nothing but the thought of killing the man who took everything from him at the forefront of his mind. Now, he stood on the precipice of testing himself against someone of comparable power, a chance to measure the depths of his progress since that fateful night. Overflowing with anticipation and unyielding resolve, Sasuke replied to Kakashi with a simple yet resolute statement, I understand. 
The Kashi nodded approvingly, pleased that the three of them were taking the test seriously and beginning to understand the importance of not just skill, but also mental resilience required in the path of becoming a shinobi. A light-hearted chuckle escaped him as he pondered how to express his sentiment. How can I put this, Kakashi said, a smile playing on his lips, I think I'm finally starting to like you guys. The collective good-natured smirk made its way on the faces of Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura in response to Kakashi's unexpected admission. We're going to start now. The trio prepared themselves, each ready to set off in different directions to search for a hiding spot and prepare for Kakashi Sensei's next move. Ready start. Boosh. 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 Fundamentally, ninjas must possess the skill to seamlessly mask their presence and elude prying eyes. The power of shadow serves as our ultimate weapon, and those who can masterfully harness them become the most formidable and lethal. Kakashi lectured, while the surrounding area remained eerily silent, indicating a thorough understanding of the concept of concealment. Well now everyone is hidden quite well. Positioned a mere few inches away and positioned above, Naruto camouflaged within the dense foliage of a tree, closely monitoring Kakashi's movements. Initially, he had intended to confront Kakashi directly. But, upon recalling how effortlessly Kakashi had defeated him before, using just one hand no less, Naruto concluded that adopting a new strategy would be more prudent. From his vantage point below, Kakashi seemed to be retrieving something from his pouch, instantly putting Naruto on edge. What could he be pulling out? Shurikens. Kunais. Or could it be something completely different? Regardless of the contents, Naruto steeled himself to face it head-on. With a single fluid motion, Kakashi withdrew the intended item from his pouch and revealed its contents to the world. The book. He withdrew a freaking book, and from the abrupt stars that shimmered in his eyes, it was unmistakably his most cherished one. Squinting a bit, Naruto could just decipher the book's title. Itcha itcha. A massive tick mark appeared on Naruto's forehead, and his fists were balled up. The bastard, he's making fun of us. Determined to make Kakashi pay for underestimating them, Naruto reached for his pouch, pulling out a handful of shurikens. If he wants to be lax about it, then we'll use it to our advantage, and that was precisely what Naruto aimed to do. Realizing that he alone wasn't going to be enough to make a dent in Kakashi's defense, especially after witnessing Kakashi effortlessly catch his shurikens with bare fingers, Naruto decided that he needed to amp things up. If one won't cut it, then five more should do the trick. Below, Kakashi appeared to be thoroughly enjoying himself, completely unaware or dismissive of his students' current thoughts and schemes against him. Reading the text with a perverse giggle, he teased, Uo, you naughty girl, Kagura, you. Someone needs to be punished, his cheeks turning slightly rosy beneath his mask as a result of what he was reading. Out of nowhere, three shurikens came slicing through the air, all heading directly for Kakashi, closing in on him with alarming speed. Remaining fixated on his book, Kakashi drew a kunai and deftly swatted the shurikens away. However, his respite was brief, as twenty more shurikens materialized, converging from all sides, effectively trapping him with no way to evade the onslaught. With no chance of escape, Kakashi found himself resembling a pin cushion as the shurikens mercilessly sliced through him from all directions. His stomach, knees, ankles, face, arms, hands and feet were all subjected to the unyielding assault of the barrage. The brutal assault rendered Kakashi motionless on the ground, his back against the earth, shurikens protruding from his entire body. His once cherished book was not spared either, torn and shredded pages strewn about, surrounding Kakashi's lifeless form, leaving the scene in complete stillness. Upon landing, Naruto's eyes widened in horror as he beheld Kakashi's motionless form, causing him to panic uncontrollably. Ah! Did I just kill Kakashi Sensei? Naruto's fear escalated as he jumped around in a state of utter panic. What do I do? I don't want to go to prison. The weight of the situation overwhelmed him, and he was desperate for a solution. From her hiding spot in a bush, Sakura witnessed the relentless shuriken onslaught directly nailing Kakashi, and she, too, was gripped with panic and shock. Did Naruto just kill Kakashi Sensei? It can't be true. Naruto wouldn't do that. Overwhelmed by the intensity of the situation, Sakura was paralyzed with a mix of shock and fear at the events that had just unfolded before her eyes. Perched in a tree, Sasuke was genuinely surprised by Naruto's uncharacteristic display of strategy. He had expected the impulsive idiot to rush straight at Kakashi the moment he said start. However, Naruto's tactic to surround Kakashi from all sides and launch a simultaneous barrage was surprisingly clever, especially coming from him. This left Sasuke pondering, how did he manage to throw shurikens at Kakashi from all sides at once? Sasuke was certain Naruto had no jutsu that could allow him to move so quickly between different positions. So how did he do it? Suddenly, Kakashi's body poofed and transformed into a mere log, leaving Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke baffled by the deception. Emerging from behind a tree, Kakashi's voice broke the silence. So. 
The rumors are true after all, he remarked. You can use the cage bunch and no jutsu. That's how you defeated Mizuki, if I am to believe the rumors. Rubbing his eyes in disbelief, Naruto looked back at the spot where Kakashi's body had been, now replaced by a log, and then turned to face the living and still reading Kakashi. He repeated the action, trying to make sense of what he was witnessing. How did you do that? I'm sure I saw you getting shredded by the shurikens, he stammered. The surreal sight made him wonder if he was witnessing a ghostly apparition. A well-timed substitution, and I thought it would be fun to give you a scare, Kakashi replied with a nonchalant tone, while flipping a page from his book. By the way, it was pretty clever of you to have your cage bunchens flank me from all sides. Given your reports from the academy, I honestly didn't think you had it in you. Naruto's annoyance was evident with the throbbing vein on his forehead, and he couldn't contain his frustration at Kakashi's mocking remark. Oh yeah? Well, I've got plenty more surprises up my sleeve. Naruto declared defiantly. Crossing his fingers into an all-too-familiar sign, he shouted out the name of his jutsu. Page Bunshin no jutsu. Large plumes of smoke erupted in the area, momentarily obscuring the view before dissipating to unveil ten additional Naruto's forming a strategic ring around Kakashi. The original Naruto signaled for the attack. Charge. He commanded, and the clones lunged forward in unison, closing in on Kakashi from all directions. Remaining fully engrossed in his book, Kakashi effortlessly intercepted one of the clone's fists thrown from behind, redirecting it into two others, ultimately dispelling all three. Executing a graceful backflip, he created some distance between himself and the crowd, simultaneously producing a handful of shurikens with one hand and aimed, successfully eliminating two clones, while the remaining ones quickly evaded his attack by leaping away. Upon landing, Kakashi executed a low sweep, causing another clone to lose balance, making him easy pickings for Kakashi to finish off with a powerful upper kick. Deciding to deal with the remaining clones all at once, Kakashi produced a kunai with an explosive tag and launched it at the cluster of clones. The resultant thunderous explosion forcibly dispelled the rest of the clones, leaving only the original, who was closing in on Kakashi rapidly through the air, clearly intent on knocking him out. That ready to be knocked out, Kakashi sensei. Those bells are mine. Landing a powerful right hook to Kakashi's face, Naruto felt a surge of confidence, believing he had finally landed a decisive blow. However, his triumph was short-lived as he soon heard the familiar sound of a clone dispersing, indicating that Kakashi had once again evaded his attack. Poof. Mama, you aren't the only one who knows how to use cage bunchens. A surge of fear shot through Naruto as he quickly craned his head to find Kakashi crouched behind him. Clasping his book between his hands, Kakashi had formed a dangerous-looking hand sign, clearly prepared to unleash a jutsu that could utterly obliterate him. While closely watching the one-sided battle between Kakashi and Naruto, Sakura's thoughts raced with worry upon noticing the possible use of ninjutsu. A hand sign. She questioned internally, her eyes widening in concern. Is that a tiger seal? Is he really planning to unleash such a high-level ninjutsu against Naruto? Observing from his concealed position, Sasuke, much like Sakura, was taken aback at Kakashi's aggressive approach toward Naruto. Noticing the hand sign, Sasuke's eyes narrowed in realization. That sign he discerned, it's for a Katen-style jutsu. He's not just toying with Naruto, he's going to absolutely demolish him. Naruto. Get out of there, quickly. He's going to use a powerful jutsu. You'll die. Sakura cried out quickly, trying to warn Naruto before it was too late. Upon hearing Sakura's abrupt cry, Naruto became briefly distracted, providing Kakashi with the opening he required to execute his next move. However, whether Sakura had shouted or not, it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Too late. Ade. Leaf Village Secret Finger Jutsu. Kakashi cried out while closing in on Naruto from behind. Shit, I can't dodge it. Naruto thought frantically as Kakashi announced his technique. Shunk. Kakashi's index and middle fingers went up Naruto's arse. 1,000 years of death. Ah. Naruto's anguished cry echoed through the air as he rocketed into the sky, clutching his rear end with both hands, with comical tears streaming from his eyes. As the comical scene unfolded, Sakura couldn't hide her letdown. That wasn't a hand sign or a jutsu at all, she muttered to herself, clearly dissatisfied with the anticlimactic display. She wanted her worries back. He just poked him. With a hint of exasperation, Sasuke wiped his hands down his face, unimpressed by the lackluster display of skill. Those two are just total idiots, he remarked, his expectations of witnessing a formidable Katen-style jutsu from a Jonin-class shinobi completely dashed. Instead, it was nothing more than one idiot poking another. Now, where was I? Kakashi's voice echoed as he spoke aloud, searching for the page he had left off. With a slight pause, he continued, ah, here we are, finally locating the right page in the book. Now. Well he's distracted. 
with remarkable speed, Sasu curled four shurikens at Kakashi, who was once again deeply engrossed in his book. Unlike with Naruto, Kakashi didn't bother catching the shurikens this time, he simply sidestepped out of their trajectory. Swift and perceptive, Sasuke had anticipated this and already sprung from his hiding spot, leaping at Kakashi to engage in close quarters combat. Kakashi raised an eyebrow, genuinely surprised. Well, well, what do we have here? I didn't expect you, of all people, to come at me head on, he remarked, observing Sasuke's rapid approach. I'm not like those two. I can handle whatever you throw my way and send it right back at you, Sasu confidently declared, ready to face Kakashi's challenges head on. Why don't you say that after you get a bell? Sasu kun, Kakashi taunted, his playful tone accompanied by a challenge. Witnessing the unwavering determination and conviction in Sasuke's eyes, coupled with the reports of him being ranked number one in his class, Kakashi promptly put his book away. Realizing that this was a moment that required his complete concentration, he couldn't afford to be distracted by reading right now and needed to be fully prepared to face Sasuke's resolve head on. In a seamless display of skill and agility, Sasuke launched a formidable left kick at Kakashi, who deftly blocked and subsequently grabbed his leg, immobilizing it. But Sasuke wasn't finished, he twisted his body around and aimed a powerful right hook at Kakashi's face. Yet again, Kakashi reacted swiftly, catching the incoming attack with his left hand and locking it in place too. Undeterred, Sasuke bent over, executing a remarkable twist and sent a forceful kick Kakashi's way. However, Kakashi promptly used his left forearm to block the kick, exemplifying his exceptional combat prowess. Sasu couldn't hide his self-assured grin as he extended his left hand, reaching with utmost confidence for the bell securely fastened to Kakashi's waist. This kid. Sasuke managed to touch and jingle one of the bells, a testament to his skill amid the intense confrontation before Kakashi promptly leaped backward, creating some distance between them to regroup and maintain his advantage in the test. He couldn't make it too easy for Sasuke to claim victory. After recovering his footing, Kakashi couldn't help but think, not bad. He acknowledged Sasuke's impressive performance, making him realize that he wouldn't have the luxury to read his beloved Icha Icha during this test. He lamented the missed opportunity, feeling disappointed, especially as he had just reached an exciting part in the book. Amidst the ongoing clash between Sasuke and Kakashi, Sakura took it upon herself to locate Naruto, who had been sent flying after Kakashi's earlier comical attack on him. Despite being aware of Sasuke's ongoing one-on-one -on -one fight with Kakashi-sensei, Sakura understood that she would only hinder rather than assist him in her current state. Realizing that their best chance at passing the test was to reunite as a team, she prioritized locating Naruto first. Once she found him, the plan was to regroup and have the three face Kakashi sensei together, increasing their chances of success. Out of nowhere, a loud noise erupted, echoing through the forest. Oh. Well I know where Naruto is now. Glad to have finally located Naruto, Sakura wasted no time and hurried in the direction of the loud noise. As she closed in on the origin of the groaning, she encountered an intriguing scene. Or rather, a chaotic one. When she arrived at the site of the groaning. The sight that met her eyes left her with a mix of amusement and concern as she assessed the situation. Sprawled in a bush, Naruto's derriere was embarrassingly elevated toward the sky, still holding onto it as if it had caught fire, which given the recent poking of said area, it might as well have been. The occasional twitching and spasming only added to the already comical scene. Quickly seeing enough of the rather embarrassing scene, Sakura rushed over to Naruto. Naruto. Get up. Sasuke-kun is facing Kakashi-sensei alone right now. He needs our help. Naruto remained twitching and unresponsive to Sakura's calls, seemingly oblivious to her words. Witnessing this, Sakura's frustration escalated, and a vein throbbed on her forehead as she firmly grasped him, resorting to vigorous shaking in an attempt to rouse him. Naruto. Get. Up. I'm up. I'm up. Naruto exclaimed his twitching subsiding as Sakura ceased shaking him like a mad doll. What happened to Sasuke again? He inquired, trying to gather his bearings and recall the situation with Sasuke. Sasuke-kun is battling Kakashi-sensei alone right now. We have to go help him. Let's go. Sakura exclaimed, already sprinting back towards the location where Sasuke and Kakashi were engaged in their battle, her urgency evident as she spoke without waiting to finish her sentence. Initially reluctant in helping Sasuke, Naruto realized that if he. They. Were going to have any hope of passing this test, all three of them working together to combat Kakashi was the only way. Quickly getting up on his own two feet, he beelined after Sakura, fully intent on helping Sasuke. Ma, I will acknowledge you are indeed different from those two, Kakashi remarked aloud as he and Sasuke confronted each other, standing face to face. However, that won't be enough. HMPH. Instead of deeming Kakashi with a proper response, Sasuke began performing a series of rapid hand signs. Serpent. Ram. 
monkey, boar, horse, tiger. Having executed the required hand signs for his jutsu, Sasuke leaned back, his mouth brimming with chakra, poised to unleash the technique he had in store for Kakashi. Pain. Nkakak no jutsu. Recognizing the hand sign Sasuke was performing and the jutsu that came with it, Kakashi's eyes widened in disbelief. What? He thought with astonishment. A genin shouldn't be capable of executing an elemental ninjutsu yet. He shouldn't have the chakra capacity for it at this level. Sasu cupped his hand around his mouth and with a powerful exhalation, a colossal fireball, easily the size of Kakashi himself, surged forth, hurtling straight at him with the intent to engulf and incinerate him. S Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z After allowing the jutsu to run its course for a few seconds, Sasuke dissipated the fire and the intense blaze was extinguished. In its wake, a colossal circular crater appeared, a testament to the might of the Katen style jutsu. The area surrounding the crater was shrouded in thick black smoke, obstructing a portion of Sasuke's field of vision. After a few seconds, the wind whisked away the smoke, revealing the area around the crater and leaving it as the sole remnant of Sasuke's jutsu. However, to Sasuke's surprise, there was no charred body within the crater, which would have been the result if Kakashi had been hit by the attack. Damn it. He got away. Sasuke thought, his mind racing as he frantically scanned his surroundings in search of where Kakashi might reappear. Is he behind me? No, above me Sasuke's body turned to each location he suspected Kakashi might be, but in every instance, he was nowhere to be found. Where is he? The urgency in Sasuke's thoughts grew as he struggled to locate his elusive opponent. Below you. The hand came out of the ground and latched onto Sasuke's left leg. Sasuke's head snapped around in surprise, and his eyes widened as he saw Kakashi's hand emerging from the ground, grabbing hold of his leg. Wa Sasuke's bewildered exclamation was cut short as Kakashi announced his jutsu, revealing the nature of his underground attack. Oten. Shinjutsanshu no jutsu. Shid Sasuke mentally cursed as he was quickly pulled down into the ground, while Kakashi extracted himself from the earth where he had been concealing himself. Walking up to a now botless Sasuke, with only his head exposed to the outside world while the rest remained trapped underground, Kakashi crouched down to Sasuke's level and fixed him with a nonchalant gaze. Well. Can't move, can you? Sasuke's resistance and grunting were the only responses Kakashi received, probably the best he was going to get. You've done well, you have talent, and you are different. However, different doesn't always mean better, Kakashi remarked as he rose from his crouching position, took out his book, and started walking away. There's a saying that the nail that sticks up is the one that gets hammered down, but oh well. Without glancing back, Kakashi waved lazily at Sasuke and added a taunting remark, have fun, before disappearing from sight. Damn it. Sasuke seethed with frustration. All those years of training, and what did he have to show for it? Stuck in the freaking ground, unable to move, and thoroughly humiliated. Is there really this much of a difference in strength? A sudden rustling of bushes alerted Sasuke that someone was closing in on his location. From the dense foliage emerged Sakura, followed by Naruto, both freezing in their tracks as they laid eyes on the side of a bottle of Sasuke, with only his head poking out from the ground. Naruto Sakura. Ha ha ha. Naruto's uncontrollable laughter echoed through the forest as he dropped to his knees, tears streaming down his cheeks. His body shook with amusement as he found it impossible to contain himself. S Sasuke ha ha ha. A cheese, just ahead, ha ha. He managed to say between his hearty laughs. The sight of Sasuke's head poking out of the ground was simply too much for Naruto, who continued to laugh heartily. It's not funny, Naruto. Sakura exclaimed, attempting to suppress her laughter. However, the slight twitching of her lips and the way she covered her mouth with her hand gave away her true feelings. Despite her protest, Sakura found the situation amusing, just like Naruto did. Naruto was practically howling, pounding his fist against the ground as he found the scene before him absolutely hilarious. It was beyond hysterical. I, I can't ha ha ha. It's just too funny, he managed to say between bursts of uncontrollable laughter. Suppressing all her instincts to burst out laughing like Naruto, Sakura mustered a serious expression and went over to help Sasuke free himself from the ground. Despite finding the situation hilarious, she managed to control her amusement. Judging by the heat on his face, Sasuke was clearly both embarrassed and angry, though it seemed the latter emotion dominated. Naruto, help me get Sasuke cut out. With tears still streaming down his face from laughter, Naruto managed to compose himself enough to respond, I am coming. Despite Sakura's plea for seriousness, he couldn't help but find the situation incredibly amusing. Seeing the prodigious Sasuke, whom he had known since childhood, bested and trapped in the ground with only his head visible, felt like a dream come true for Naruto. 
Sasuke, who was going absolutely red in the face, with his right eye twitching madly, promising pain and misery, had finally had enough of Naruto's relentless laughter at his predicament. He let out a seething voice, the only thing he could freely use in his current state. Dope. Get me out of here. Now. Oh okay, oh okay. Drying his tears and standing up, steadying his still shaky knees, Naruto went over to help Sakura, who was already attempting to pull Sasuke out of the man-made hole with minimal success. Seeing that brute force alone wouldn't suffice to free Sasuke, Naruto realized that a more creative approach was needed. Page Bunshin no Jutsu. Four identical clones materialized beside the original, each of them swiftly retrieving a kunai from their holsters. The sudden appearance of the clones caught the attention of both Sasuke and Sakura. Sakura, who was in the middle of her rescue attempt, turned her head to see the four Naruto's. Her loss of focus cost her, as she was quite literally strangling Sasuke, if his face turning purple or the desperate pleas directed at her to stop her unintentional strangling, didn't give it away. Sakura's focus finally shifted to the sight of Sasuke turning purple and his desperate pleas for her to stop, prompting her to immediately release her grip on him. She quickly muttered an apology to Sasuke, who was gasping for air after being freed from her unintentional strangling. With her attention now on Naruto, she turned towards him. Confused about Naruto's plan with the clones, Sakura questioned his actions. Naruto, what are you doing? Illusions won't help us free Sasuke. These clones are different, Naruto explained. His point became evident as the four clones of himself approached Sasuke, their kunai held firmly in front of them, proving that they were not mere afterimages or illusions like the regular bunch in no jutsu. What? They're real how did he do that? Sakura's mind was boggled by Naruto's display of an advanced form of Bunshin no Jutsu. However, before she could inquire about how he learned such a technique, her attention was drawn to all the clones, each armed with a kunai, closing in on Sasuke. Why do all your clones have kunais, Naruto? Are you planning on hurting Sasuke-kun? Her protective instincts kicked in, ready to defend Sasuke and reprimand Naruto if he had any cruel intentions. Relax, Sakura-chan, Naruto said, placatingly raising his hands in a calming manner. I'm just trying to dig out the hole around Sasuke to give him more room so he can wiggle himself out. Your way wasn't working, so I'm trying it my way. He reassured her that he had no intention of hurting Sasuke and was attempting to find a different approach to free their teammate. Oh, that's actually a great idea, Sakura complimented, acknowledging the effectiveness of Naruto's approach. She was about to help the clones free Sasuke before she realized the second part of what he had said. Hey. What do you mean my plan wasn't working out? I was just about to get him out, I'll have you know. She defended her plan, convinced that it would have eventually succeeded in freeing Sasuke. Sakura, you were literally choking him to death. He was literally turning purple. Was not. Was too. Was not. Was too. Was not. Was not. Was too. Aha. Got you. Naruto shouted, overjoyed by his ingenious trick. Why HRRR Naruto. Barf. I'm sorry. Can you please get off, Sakura-chan? Not until I make you pay. As Naruto and Sakura continued their playful banter, Sasuke, stuck in the hole, grew increasingly annoyed and frustrated by the minute. The excessive twitching of his right eye and the prominent vein on his forehead displayed his mounting irritation at their antics. He couldn't help but feel exasperated, wishing they would stop their squabbling and focus on helping him escape. Crack. 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 Finally. Sasuke thought in relief. The clone's efforts had paid off, creating enough of a dent in the hole for Sasuke to leap out and free himself at last. Enough. You too. He exclaimed, clearly fed up with their behavior. Naruto, still caught in Sakura's chokehold, and Sakura, the one doing the choking, turned their heads in the direction of the voice. Sasuke-kun. You got out. Sakura exclaimed, releasing her chokehold on Naruto, which resulted in a thump and a quick ouch from him. She rushed to hug Sasuke in relief and happiness at his newfound freedom. Cut it out. Don't cling to me. Sasuke protested, struggling to free himself from Sakura's embrace. Despite his best efforts, he found his attempts to separate himself from her tight hold fruitless. Hey. Naruto's voice rang out, more specifically aimed directly at Sakura. A little thank you for the person who just saved him would be nice, he said, referring to himself. Sakura, blushing and rubbing the back of her head out of embarrassment, let go of Sasuke and turned toward Naruto. Right, my bad. Clearing her throat with a quick ahem, Sakura voiced her thanks to Naruto. Thank you, Naruto, for helping Sasuke-kun get out of the hole. Aw shucks. Naruto was the one blushing now. It was nothing, Sakura-chan. Really. He insisted modestly. Then, Naruto shifted his attention towards Sasuke, who had remained notably silent throughout the exchange. With a playful condescending smirk worming its way across his face, Naruto teasingly asked, well. Where's my thank you? 
He was clearly expecting a reaction from Sasuke, eager to see how he would react to the dead last saving him. Sasuke remained silent, his expression revealing a mix of reluctance and inner conflict. Sakura turned to him, her eyes filled with concern. Sasuke-kun? She called out, sensing that something was bothering him and wanting to understand what was going on in his mind. Thank you, Sasuke managed to utter, his voice small and reluctant. It was clear that expressing gratitude was not something that came easily to him, nor did he like to show it, but he acknowledged Naruto's help nonetheless. Naruto couldn't resist taunting Sasuke further, wearing a mischievous and self-satisfied smile. He mockingly cupped his hand around his ear, pointing it in Sasuke's direction as a taunting gesture. What was that, Sasuke-chan? He teased, clearly enjoying the moment. Could you say it one more time, please? I had trouble hearing you the first time. Naruto was thoroughly relishing mocking Sasuke and was determined to make the most of the situation while he could. Sasuke grunted, his voice a bit louder this time, though still laced with reluctance and tension. Thank. You. He managed to utter the words through clenched teeth, showing that he really hated thanking Naruto of all people, but conceding once more to Naruto's request, no matter how irritating it was. A bit louder. Thank you. Sasuke's voice trembled visibly, his fists tightly balled up, and his face taking on an interesting shade of red. Naruto couldn't resist pushing Sasuke's buttons just a bit further, his mischievous Cheshire grin still intact. One more time, please, he playfully requested. Sasuke's irritation boiled over, and he finally had enough of the teasing. Damn it. I said thank you. He snapped, his patience worn thin. Without looking back, he turned away from Naruto and Sakura, walking off to find some peace and quiet. You're welcome, Sasuke-chan. Naruto hollered towards the back of the retreating Sasuke. Wait, Sasuke-kun. Where are you going? Sakura's voice carried concern as she watched Sasuke walking away. Are you planning to fight Kakashi-sensei again? She inquired anxiously, not wanting him to get involved in another potential conflict. At least, not by himself. Sasuke came to a stop and turned to face Sakura, answering her question. I was able to touch one of the bells last time. I'll take them both this time, he stated with determination. His desire to prove himself and surpass his previous showings was evident in his resolute words. He yeah. He's so cool. Inner Sakura gushed with admiration. Outwardly, Sakura appeared more compassed, in contrast to her inner thoughts. Let Naruto and I help you. With us working together, we can definitely take on Kakashi-sensei. I don't need your help, Sasuke interrupted coldly, showing no hint of remorse on his face. You two will just slow me down like you always do. His words were sharp and dismissive, making it clear that he believed he could handle the situation on his own and had no desire for assistance from Naruto and Sakura. Sasuke-kun, Sakura mumbled, her voice trembling with hurt and her hands covering her mouth to mask the hurt she felt from his callous words. Her eyes reflected the pain of his rejection as she struggled to come to terms with his harsh response. Says the guy who got stuck in a hole and couldn't get out without our help, Naruto retorted, stepping in to support Sakura. Stop trying to act all high and mighty and come join us and apologize to Sakura-chan while you're at it, will ya? He refused to let Sasuke's dismissive words and attitude go unchecked, especially when it was directed towards Sakura. Shut up. You know nothing about me. Nothing. He lashed out, his voice filled with anger and frustration. Sasuke's emotions were clearly raw, and he was not in a mood to be reasoned with or understood at that moment. The sudden outburst left both Naruto and Sakura speechless. It was the first time they had ever seen Sasuke display such intense emotions, filled with rage and hate. The change in him was so drastic that it left them questioning if this was truly the same Sasuke they knew. As the wind picked up and the leaves floated around him, a haunting image flashed in Sasuke's mind. A man shrouded in shadows with a single blood red eye containing three ominous black tomo. The visage of the one who had marked his past. The atmosphere became tenser and foreboding, amplifying the weight of Sasuke's words. I'm the only one that can kill that man, he stated with an eerie calmness, his voice unwavering and filled with absolute conviction. The memory of the previous day rushed back to both Naruto and Sakura. They remembered the moment when the three of them had introduced themselves to each other and their sensei, a time that now felt both distant and fleeting, compared to the intense emotions of the present. What I have is not a dream, because I will make it a reality. I'm going to restore my clan and destroy a certain someone. Who was the man that Sasuke had to kill? What actions did this person take to instill such deep-rooted hatred in Sasuke? As Sasuke spoke, it almost seemed as if he was talking to himself more than to Naruto and Sakura. His words carried a weight of solemnity and determination, like a pledge or promise he was making to himself. At that time. I was crying. Never again, he confessed, his voice tinged with the pain of his past. I'm an Avenger. I must become stronger than that man. I can't afford to waste my time here. 
His unwavering determination to seek revenge and grow stronger overshadowed everything else, and he seemed resolute in leaving everything behind to achieve his goal. Well, guess what, team? Naruto interrupted Sasuke's monologue, his voice filled with heated conviction. You're gonna be stuck here if you don't cooperate with us. Naruto's interruption caught Sasuke's attention, evident from how his head snapped toward Naruto's direction. Naruto wasn't done though, far from it. You keep going on about needing to defeat this certain man. Well, guess what? That'll never happen if you don't help us, here and now, defeat Kakashi-sensei. Naruto's words were earnest and unwavering, as he emphasized the importance of their present mission. You won't get the chance to become strong enough to defeat this person you're so obsessed about if you're stuck in the academy forever. He pointed out the irony of Sasuke's singular focus on revenge, while neglecting the opportunities right in front of him to grow stronger and become a true ninja. Sasuke's eyes widened, showing a hint of realization and vulnerability, as Naruto's words struck a nerve. It seemed he had never truly considered the implications of Naruto's point, and the truth of it hit him hard. If he couldn't defeat Kakashi here and now, he would be sent back to the academy, wasting precious years that he could use to hone his skills under the tutelage of a jonin. The weight of the realization settled on him heavily, knowing that without seizing this opportunity, he would never be able to grow strong enough to face the man he sought to kill. Naruto's question was direct and sharp, demanding Sasuke's full attention. Well Naruto pressed, not holding back. Are you going to help us? Or are you gonna fail and be a loser like me? Which is it? His words cut through the air with intensity, challenging Sasuke to make a decision and take action. The great conflict raged inside Sasuke's heart as he grappled with Naruto's words. Deep down, he knew that Naruto was right, but there was a part of him that couldn't fully accept relying on others for his goals. Defeating that man was a personal vendetta he held close to his heart. It was his and his alone to settle. However, the reality of the situation was undeniable. No matter what he felt, it was all meaningless if he couldn't even take one of the bells from Kakashi before noon. His past failure in battling Kakashi alone was still fresh on his mind and still stung, and he was well aware of how much he owed Naruto and Sakura for their help. Born between his pursuit of revenge and the possibility of attaining strength through teamwork, Sasuke found himself at a crossroads, uncertain of the right path to take. The choice before him felt insurmountable, leaving Sasuke in a state of conflict and inner turmoil. Sasuke's frustration and inner conflict reached a breaking point, and he finally relented, admitting defeat. Fine. Damn it. Fine. You win, he acquiesced, his voice laced with a mixture of annoyance and resignation. Releasing a heavy sigh, he let go of the pent-up frustration that had been building within him. I'll join you too. What's the plan? He asked, acknowledging that he needed their help and was willing to set aside his pride to work as a team. Sakura's heart swelled with relief and joy as she saw Sasuke finally accepting their help. A bright smile adorned her face, clearly displaying her happiness and contentment. The tension that had been lingering between them seemed to dissipate as they finally began to embrace the spirit of teamwork. With a victorious smile, Naruto ushered Sasuke and Sakura to come closer. All right. Now we're talking. All right, team. This is the plan. He that's right, Yuta. That's the spot. He. Kakashi said out loud, talking to himself while giggling perversely with one hand covering his mouth. Oh, we're getting to the juicy parts now, he. Kakashi had initially set out to find Sakura and test her skills, but his book proved too captivating, and he got sidetracked. Finding a comfortable stump to sit on, he immersed himself in the pages, temporarily forgetting about Sakura altogether. However, even as he lost himself in the story, Kakashi's analytical mind couldn't be still. Thoughts of Naruto and Sasuke's performance during the exercise crept into his consciousness, and he couldn't help but evaluate their skills and attitudes. So far, he wasn't impressed with what he had seen from them. Though he possesses immense chakra reserves, he lacks the skill and control to fully utilize it Kakashi analyzed with a discerning eye, recognizing Naruto's raw power, but also his need for refinement and discipline. The topic of Naruto's intelligence brought a slight grimace to Kakashi's face, as he acknowledged that Naruto had room for improvement in that department. However, amidst the critique, Kakashi couldn't deny that Naruto's maneuver with his clones showed cleverness and quick thinking. It hinted at hidden depths beyond his initial impressions. Perhaps there was more to Naruto than met the eye, and with the right guidance, he could overcome his shortcomings and reach his true potential as a ninja. Sasuke on the other hand Kakashi thought with a wince as he mentally reviewed his and Sasuke's past interactions and what he knew of the boy based on his files. It wasn't good. There's no denying his skills, he's undoubtedly talented, for a genin, and shows great promise Kakashi admitted, recognizing Sasuke's prowess. After all, his accomplishments earned him the title of Rookie of the Year for his generation. However, Kakashi couldn't overlook Sasuke's troubling mentality and attitude toward his teammates, Naruto and Sakura. The boy's apathy and detachment were worrying and for all the wrong reasons. 
although Kakashi continued with a grimace. If your brother wiped out your entire clan and killed your entire family, it would be hard-pressed for anyone not to turn out like Sasuke. Considering the trauma he had endured, it's remarkable that Sasuke had not completely lost himself to darkness. Despite his struggles, Sasuke has demonstrated a level of resilience and determination that spoke to his inner strength that few possesses. Out of nowhere, three smoke bombs rocketed toward him. Upon impact with the ground, they erupted into a torrent of purple smoke, engulfing not only his entire field of vision, but also extending beyond it. In a split second, Kakashi stowed away his book and leaped away from the enveloping smoke generated by the exploding smoke bombs. Yet, his escape was met with a relentless hail of kunai hurtling his way. Reacting with lightning speed, he pushed off the ground with great force, propelling himself out of the smokescreen and into the clear sky, regaining his vision. But, in a heartbeat, an abrupt cry from above warned him of an impending aerial assault. Those bells are mine Kakashi-sensei. Don't give away your attack, Naruto Kakashi sighed inwardly, disappointed by Naruto's lack of thoughtfulness. What good does it help you if your enemy can anticipate your every move? Masterfully parrying Naruto's right hook and left kick in midair, Kakashi seamlessly twisted his body and unleashed a powerful kick, transforming Naruto into a plummeting cannon bolt that cracked the ground upon impact. Gracefully landing on the ground, Kakashi patiently awaited Naruto's resurfacing, taking the opportunity to offer a stern lecture about his errors. Your element of surprise was lost when you shouted at me, rendering the earlier smoke bombs pointless, Naruto, Kakashi admonished as Naruto climbed out of the man-made hole. Revealing your location to your opponent will only lead to fatal consequences. Without his usual retort, Naruto simply smirked in response to Kakashi's reprimand. With a calm demeanor, he explained, those smoke bombs weren't meant for me, Kakashi-sensei. They were meant to distract you from the other two. What? Kakashi responded, perplexed and instantly alert. Kakashi's senses heightened as the sound of a rope being sliced echoed in his ears, alerting him to an imminent threat. Reacting quickly, he leaped away, narrowly avoiding a massive log hurtling toward him. Crap he thought, bewildered by the sudden assault. Where did that come from? Gazing upward, he spotted Sakura perched in a tree, preparing to sever another rope that seemed to be another trap. The unexpected sight left Kakashi puzzled about her presence and her potential collaboration with Naruto. Sakura. When did she arrive? Are she and Naruto working together? But Sakura's swift action, the rope was cut, triggering a fierce onslaught of kunai, some of them rigged with paper bombs. Acting on instinct, Kakashi promptly substituted himself with a nearby log, evading the explosive chaos that ensued after the kunais engulfed the wooden decoy. Kakashi was taken by surprise as Sasuke materialized behind him with uncanny speed. What in the before he could finish his sentence, Sasuke initiated another ferocious bout of close quarter combat, unleashing a barrage of even harder, quicker, and more precise punches and kicks than their previous encounter. Despite the escalated intensity, Kakashi effortlessly matched Sasuke's movements, keeping up with the onslaught with ease. Really, Sasuke? Didn't our last encounter teach you that Tajutsu won't work on me? Kakashi retorted, slightly exasperated. Sasuke's Achiha-like smirk was his only response, remaining undeterred by Kakashi's words. Leaf Village Secret Finger Jutsu. Amidst their intense duel, Kakashi's instincts urged him to steal a quick glance behind him. The sight that met his eyes struck terror in his heart, making fear course through his veins. Naruto was rapidly closing in on him, his hands forming an all-too-familiar sign, and a wave of realization washed over Kakashi. For the first time during this test, beads of sweat formed on Kakashi's forehead, and an unfamiliar sense of nervousness crept into his being. Here I come, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto's exuberant shout rang through the air, brimming with excitement at the prospect of avenging himself for Kakashi's earlier actions. It's payback time. He proclaimed, determination blazing in his eyes. One thousand years of death. Naruto's hands were dangerously close to Kakashi's rear, prompting Kakashi to arch his back away, narrowly avoiding what could have been a deeply embarrassing and humiliating experience. With a swift backflip, he managed to gain distance from both Sasuke and Naruto, allowing him to breathe a sigh of relief. For his butt. Wu. You. you almost had me there, Naruto, Kakashi acknowledged, his heartbeat starting to settle. I see you've taken a page out of my book, and I must say, I like that. Kakashi praised Naruto's strategy. Using yourself and the smoke bombs as a diversion to set up traps and catch me off guard was quite clever. Not bad at all. The visible sense of frustration overcame Naruto, his teeth clenched tightly as he felt the taste of victory just within reach. But as fate would have it, it slipped away like sand through his fingers. In a moment of childlike exasperation, he stomped his foot on the ground and let out a loud complaint. Damn it. I almost had him. It would have been the funniest thing ever. Naruto lamented, his disappointment evident. 
As he stood beside Naruto, Sasuke's frustration gave way to astonishment at how close Naruto came to executing the embarrassing technique successfully on Kakashi. Who would have thought the dead last could come up with such a plan? Sasuke mused with a sardonic smirk, acknowledging Naruto's unexpected ingenuity. Sporting a playful demeanor, Kakashi addressed the now fully assembled Team 7, Ma, Ma, the three of you against Little Almi. He quipped, his tone light and teasing. Sakura landed gracefully from the treetop, completing the team's reunion. That hardly seems fair, don't you think? He added, his comment laced with humor and sarcasm. Naruto retorted with a nonchalant tone, having moved on from his missed opportunity to repay Kakashi with the same technique. Yeah, whatever, sensei, he replied, brushing off Kakashi's playful remark. We all know you're just messing with us, Naruto said, his response indicating a sense of camaraderie and familiarity with Kakashi's antics. Sakura chimed in, backing up Naruto's assertion with confidence. That's right. We know you too well, sensei. You can't fool us with your tricks anymore. Sasuke simply responded with a HMPH, expressing his agreement with Sakura and Naruto's sentiments. Kakashi couldn't help but be amused by his genin's banter. Ouch. My cute little genins don't believe me. He exclaimed dramatically, feigning hurt as he clutched his chest. I'm devastated, he continued in a mockingly mournful tone, wiping away imaginary tears from his eyes for added effect. Naruto, ever the enthusiastic one, made a straightforward request, how about giving us the bells? Akashi responded with a sly smile, now, now, that would be cheating, wouldn't it? Worth a try. Now. Taking the initiative, Naruto moved to the forefront while Sasuke and Sakura swiftly positioned themselves behind him, forming a unified front. Crossing his fingers, Naruto began to call forth his now well-known signature jutsu, ready to put their plan into action. Page Bunshin no jutsu. Naruto's voice boomed as ten identical copies of him materialized from the billowing white smoke that came with the jutsu. The clones promptly joined forces with the original Naruto and the rest of the team, forming a formidable group. The original, together with clones, rushed Kakashi while Sasuke and Sakura held their ground, ready to follow up with another attack. Page Bunshin's again. Kakashi questioned, seemingly unfazed by Naruto's repeated use of the technique. How many times must I tell you that Cage Bunshins won't defeat me? With impressive ease, he dispatched each clone one by one, swiftly kicking one in the face until it vanished, and delivering a devastating punch to the stomach of another, causing it to explode. Repeating the process, Kakashi effortlessly dismantled the remaining clones, showcasing his display of skill and giving substantiation to his earlier statements. Naruto's urgency was evident as he called out to Sasuke, hurry it up, will ya? He felt the pressure mounting, knowing that his clones were rapidly being defeated one after another, and time was running out. They won't hold out much longer, Naruto warned, feeling the pressure to act quickly before it was too late. But his hand signs completed, Sasuke called out to Naruto, done. Move out of the way, loser. Obeying Sasuke's command, Naruto quickly jumped back from the fray, making room for Sasuke to unleash his jutsu. Pain. Nkakak no jutsu. But the powerful release of Chakra, a colossal fireball came alive and charged relentlessly at the group of clones and Kakashi, engulfing them in its fiery fury upon impact. The intense blaze incinerated both the clones and their instructor to ashes in an instant. The sounds of the remaining clones popping resonated through the air, signifying the decisive outcome of the formidable attack. The battlefield was left in silence, save for the crackling flames and the aftermath of Sasuke's devastating jutsu. As the fiery explosion subsided, a figure came skirting out, veiled by swirling smoke. Within moments, the wisps of smoke slowly dissipated, revealing none other than Kakashi sliding backward and revealed to have survived the attack unscathed. Were you? A coordinated attack from you too? I would have never thought it possible, Kakashi admitted, impressed by their teamwork. But then, he continued with a smirk, too bad it's not enough to. Before Kakashi could finish his sentence, a string of wire materialized out of nowhere, swiftly encircling him and effectively binding his arms to his body, rendering him unable to move. What? Kakashi exclaimed, taken aback by the unexpected trap that had snared him, leaving him momentarily defenseless. Kakashi's quick wit and keen observation skills kicked in as he traced the trail of ninja wiring that ensnared him. He lowered his gaze and noticed the wire originating from Naruto, who appeared to be wire-free. Suddenly, it dawned on him. Sakura. Kakashi thought to himself, impressed by her strategic maneuver. She was behind Naruto, using him and Sasuke as decoys and holding the wire until the exact moment I landed right in the spot before trapping me with it. The calculated ploy left Kakashi both impressed and temporarily immobilized, caught in Sakura's skillful trap. Seizing the moment, Naruto and Sasuke sprang into action, leaping at Kakashi with all their might, their eyes locked on the bells hanging at his waist that were now easy pickings. I got it. 
exclaimed both of them, with their hands just mere inches away from grasping the bells and seconds away from passing this grueling test once and for all. Ring. 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 Time's up. Kakashi cheerfully announced, despite still being bound in ninja wire. Naruto and Sasu came to a sudden halt, frozen mid-step, their hands hovering just inches from the bells. Their faces turned pale, stunned by the realization of their failure. Sakura's grip on the ninja wire slackened, and she crumbled to the floor, unable to believe they had come so close to success only to fall short. Lump. Sasuke and Naruto found themselves in a comically awkward position, collapsing to the ground in utter shock. Still grappling with disbelief, Naruto stammered, more to himself than asking a question, W we failed. How? How could we fail? Meanwhile, Sasuke's face contorted with anger, though it was hard to discern if it was directed at himself, Naruto, or Sakura. The bindings around him loosened, allowing Kakashi to free himself from the wire. Dusting off his arms, he turned towards the three youngsters, now visibly pale and trembling. The three of you performed admirably, Kakashi acknowledged, but, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. The three young ninjas appeared even more disheartened, as Kakashi's words felt like a death sentence to their aspirations. Unperturbed by their reactions, Kakashi pressed on. As a consequence, you will be sent back to the academy and required to stay there for another year before you get another chance at attempting this test again. Kakashi's words landed like heavy blows, crushing Naruto and Sakura's spirits even further. They slumped, heads low, consumed by a sense of defeat. In contrast, Sasuke, on the other hand, seethed with anger rather than succumbing to depression. For him, this failure felt like the destruction of his entire life, given his ultimate ambition. He wasn't the only one. Naruto's heart sank, drowning in sorrow and disappointment. Finally passing the graduation test had been his long-awaited chance to become a shinobi and break free from the confines of Konoha's walls. Now, it all seemed futile. As for Sakura, she couldn't help but feel let down. She had vowed to grow stronger for herself and her team, but this setback made her question her capabilities. It was as if all her efforts had been in vain and she was on the verge of losing her team altogether. However, Kakashi cut in, interrupting their somber moods and prompting them to look up at him. In light of your recent performance and the display of teamwork, I'm going to make an exception, he said, flashing his signature eye smile. With a renewed spark of hope in their eyes, the three young ninjas rose from the ground, their earlier dejection fading away. They turned to face Kakashi, their expressions now filled with newfound determination and conviction. Any trace of happiness that Kakashi had shown earlier vanished in an instant, replaced by a stern and grave expression. He glared at all three of them, conveying the weight of the responsibility he was bestowing upon them. I hope the three of you are prepared for what lies ahead. The opportunity I'm granting you is not to be taken lightly, and I won't offer it again. Consider yourselves fortunate, as your previous showings were far from satisfactory, he warned. Bakashi's gaze then fell upon Naruto, who looked visibly nervous and was sweating profusely under the intensity of Kakashi's stare. Naruto, while you displayed skill in using your clone strategically, you made the mistake of going solo and leaving your teammates behind, Kakashi addressed him sternly. In a real mission, such actions could have resulted in the death of your teammates, and the blame would have been solely on your shoulders. Naruto's head drooped, acknowledging the truth in Kakashi's words. His overconfidence and rivalry with Sasuke had nearly jeopardized their future as a team and as shinobi. Sasuke, Kakashi continued, his tone strict, you labeled your teammates as liabilities, disregarded them, and proceeded with a lone wolf approach, believing you could handle everything by yourself. Individuals who operate as loners jeopardize the lives of their comrades, and history has shown that loners like you don't have a long shelf life in this line of work. Sasuke absorbed Kakashi's words, appearing angry, but also showing a glimmer of comprehension about the message being conveyed. However, that didn't mean he had to like it. Turning his attention to the final member of Team 7, Kakashi addressed Sakura with a serious tone, while your knowledge of shinobi theory is commendable, as demonstrated by your success in the academy, you failed to apply that knowledge effectively in real combat situations. Theoretical understanding alone is insufficient without the ability to execute it in practice. If you continue down this path, you'll become a liability on real missions. Sakura absorbed Kakashi's words, recognizing their truth. She was beginning to realize that she had wasted precious years in the academy, resulting in her current weakness. Accepting Kakashi's assessment, she knew she had to make a change and improve herself. In a stern and uncompromising tone, Kakashi turned to address the entire team, entering into a harsh lecture mode. Missions are conducted by squads, not individuals. While ninjas indeed require exceptional individual skills, teamwork outweighs any single person's abilities. The collective power and skill of a well-functioning team surpass that of any individual. Akashi paused, giving the three young ninjas a disappointed and grave look. 
however, he continued, you dimwits foolishly disregarded the importance of teamwork until it was too late, and as a consequence, you couldn't obtain the bells. If you had realized this sooner and worked together, you might have had a chance to take the bells from me. What a shame. His words conveyed both disappointment and a sense of missed opportunity for the team. Sakura's sudden realization of the number of bells hit her like a lightning bolt. Wait a minute. She interjected. There were only two bells from the start. If only two can pass, and there were three of us, then no matter what we did, one of us would have failed. That's not teamwork, it would only create internal conflict within the team. Her words held truth, exposing the flaw in Kakashi's test and its potential to breed animosity among them. The test, as it stood, seemed more like a setup for failure rather than an opportunity for growth and unity as a team. Kakashi's harsh response affirmed Sakura's suspicion. That's the point. He exclaimed, leaving no room for doubt. This test was intentionally designed to pit you against each other. Eh? This revelation left the three young ninjas taken aback, realizing that the test had been engineered to test not only their individual skills, but also their ability to work together and overcome internal conflicts. The point of this test was to discern who would prioritize teamwork over their own self-interest. It aimed to reveal who could place the team's success above passing the test individually, Kakashi explained sternly. He stressed the critical distinction between individuals who prioritize their personal ambitions over the well-being of the team. Those who care more about their own interests and well-being will only sow discord within the team, jeopardizing not only the mission but also the lives of their comrades. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura humbly bowed their heads, fully acknowledging their mistakes and the validity of Kakashi's words. The weight of their failure weighed heavily on them, and they realized that they had fallen short during the test greatly. I should fail you three, Kakashi stated, causing them to freeze and tense up, expecting the worst. However, as I stated before, your last moment of teamwork impressed me enough that I am willing to give you one more chance to prove yourselves capable of working as a team. With newfound determination, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura's eyes blazed with a fierce fire. It wasn't just about proving Kakashi wrong, it was about proving themselves wrong. They wanted to demonstrate that they were capable of working as a cohesive team, breaking free from their previous shortcomings. Observing the determination burning in their eyes, Kakashi nodded to himself, recognizing the fire that had been kindled within them. The battle for the bells will be far more challenging than it was before noon, he warned the three, emphasizing the increased difficulty of the upcoming fight. Those who wish to take on the challenge can eat lunch, however, Kakashi paused deliberately before continuing, focusing his gaze directly on Sakura. Sakura's heart skipped a beat, feeling a mixture of anticipation and nervousness as she awaited Kakashi's words. Sakura, despite working with Naruto and Sasuke, you contributed the least during this test, he stated firmly, leaving no room for debate. And so, you will be strapped to the stump and not be allowed to eat lunch. What? Kakashi's stern expression and the shadow cast across his face intensified the tension in the air. Ignoring any protests or indignation, he kept his gaze fixed on the three young ninjas, making his message clear. If anyone allows her to eat, that person will be immediately disqualified on the spot, he stated firmly, leaving no room for debate. No more chances, is that understood? Naruto shook his head vigorously, affirming his commitment to abiding by the rules and not allowing Sakura to eat. Sasuke's response was more measured but just as resolute. He nodded once, conveying that he fully comprehended the gravity of the situation. Good, eat, and we'll begin once you're done, Kakashi's voice echoed, though he had already disappeared, leaving only a few falling leaves to mark his previous presence. In the clearing, the surrounding area reverberated with a loud growling sound, a clear sign of hunger. Once more, the sound echoed, this time with greater intensity than the previous. Are you alright, Sakura-chan? Naruto asked with evident concern on his face. I'm fine, Naruto, really, Sakura reassured, while she remained bound to a stump. P-R-R-R-R-R. He, Sakura sheepishly laughed as her stomach betrayed her earlier words as it grumbled audibly. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura formed a trio, gathered around the stump that held the alarm clock. Though in Sakura's case, she was bound and tied to the stump rather than sitting freely. Before Kakashi left, he tied Sakura to the stump and handed the boys their lunches to eat. That's how time passed. The two boys enjoying their meals while Sakura's stomach audibly grumbled every few minutes, a clear sign of her hunger, especially because she had skipped dinner the night before as part of her diet. Naruto, witnessing Sakura's evident suffering, decided he had seen enough. Setting aside his lunch, he offered it to her with a kind gesture. Here, Sakura-chan. You can have some of mine. Then Naruto, Sakura stammered, taken aback by Naruto's willingness to sacrifice his own opportunity as a shinobi for her. The realization dawned on her, and she began to understand the depth of Naruto's friendship. She felt incredibly fortunate and regretful that she hadn't realized it before. You don't have to worry about me, Naruto. Really. 
I'll be okay. As she comprehended the true extent of his friendship, Sakura knew she couldn't allow Naruto to sacrifice his future for her. He had already endured so much pain and loss, and she couldn't bear to be the reason for another sacrifice on his part. But Sakura Chan Naruto hesitated, fully aware that Sakura wouldn't stand a chance in the next round of fighting without any food. Plus, her stomach was still growling like crazy. Sasuke too, offered his lunch to her. Here, he said, extending the food toward her. Sasuke-kun? Sakura was genuinely astonished now. First, Naruto's selfless offer, and now Sasuke. The very same Sasuke who had distanced himself from her since their academy days, was now willing to sacrifice his ambitions to help her. She was at a loss for words. B but what about what Sensei said? Sakura murmured, glancing left and right to check if Kakashi had overheard their conversation. She was concerned about the consequences of accepting their kindness, as Kakashi had warned them about the harsh reality of the shinobi world and the sacrifices they might have to make. It's fine. There's no sign of him now. The three of us are going to take the bells together, he announced confidently, making his intentions clear to the surprised listeners. It'll be trouble for me. For us. If you become a hindrance due to your hunger. So eat, he urged Sakura, showing a level of concern and determination that she had never witnessed from him before. With a mix of disbelief and amusement, Sakura watched as Naruto shook off his surprise at Sasuke's unexpected team-spirited words. But Naruto being Naruto, quickly regained his energetic spirit and grabbed a portion of his lunch with his chopsticks, playfully pushing it toward Sakura's face. Yeah, what the bastard said. Naruto exclaimed with a bright grin. Eat up, so we can take the bells from Kakashi-sensei together. Naruto, shut up. Make me, bastard. As Sakura observed the back and forth between Naruto and Sasuke, a profound sense of gratitude overwhelmed her. This moment felt so special to her, knowing that these two were willing to set aside their ambitions and challenge their sensei's orders for her sake. She couldn't believe her luck to have such devoted teammates. Tears welled up in her eyes, but a bright and heartwarming smile illuminated her face. You guys she whispered, her voice filled with emotion. Thank you. Behind a nearby tree, not too far from the trio, Kakashi leaned against the trunk with content and pleased eye smile. He observed the three of them, listening to their lively conversation and banter with satisfaction. Seeing how they had come together as a team, willing to support and care for each other, warmed Kakashi's heart. During the intense match, as he hurled insults at Sasuke that a mother would shield her child from, Naruto shifted his attention back to Sakura, his face beaming with warmth and affection. Of course, Sakura-chan. He exclaimed merrily. Now open up and say A-W-W. Wah don't make it weird Naruto. Sakura jived while Naruto continued to smile. Hurry it up. We don't know when he'll be back, Sasuke said, clearly on alert about Kakashi's imminent return. Naruto's smile remained unwavering as Sakura, with no room to argue, gave in. Fine, but just this once. She conceded. Opening her mouth, Naruto fed her his food. Boom. The massive explosion hit them with tremendous force, causing thick smoke to engulf the surroundings, partially obscuring the area. The wind billowed fiercely and quickly, adding to the intensity of the situation. You three. Kakashi yelled in absolute rage as he emerged from the thick smoke caused by the large explosion. The explosion he caused upon impact with the ground. Ah. Ray I ah. DCH. You broke the rules, which means you know what's coming. Kakashi stated with a deeply angered expression on his face. But the swift sequence of hand signs, the once clear sky darkened and lightning bolts erupted, streaking across the landscape as the deafening sound of thunder echoed everywhere. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Kakashi thundered, his eyes fixed on the three individuals before him. Naruto trembled, his teeth audibly chattering from fear. Sakura tightly shut her eyes, trying to block out the terrifying scene before her, and her body shook as she struggled against her restraints. Sasuke's eyes narrowed, and his mouth formed a scowl, showing his displeasure with the current situation. He but before their formidable and terrifying sensei, Naruto found himself in a state of utter stuttering, unable to articulate a coherent sentence due to fear. Huh. But. 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 You said there were three of us, and that's why me and Sasuke Naruto's babbling trailed off as he struggled to find the right words to express himself due to fear. We're a three-man squad, aren't we? We're all in this together, Sasuke asserted, backing up Naruto's words. Still bound in place, Sakura opened her eyes and stared defiantly at Kakashi with all the courage she could muster. That's right. The three of us are one. That's right. Dadabeo. The three of you are one, you say Kakashi repeated, his menacing stride bringing him closer to the trio. Dispelling his jutsu, he leaned in, leveling them with a heavy stare. Undeterred, the three of them met his gaze head-on, returning his heart and glares with unwavering resolve. Thought you pass. Huh? Wah. 
You pass, Kakashi repeated, his signature eye smile returning to his face. You guys are the first to pass my test, he added, expressing his admiration for their exceptional teamwork and resilience. Sakura, still uncertain about whether Kakashi was being truthful or if this was still part of the test, needed to confirm. We passed. How? Why? She inquired, seeking clarification on their success. Rising from his leaning position, Kakashi gazed at the now fully minted genin, their shock still evident. The students I had before you were dunces, he explained. They merely followed my orders without question, too afraid to disobey. But you three have demonstrated teamwork, courage, and the ability to think for yourselves. The darkened clouds began to disperse, unveiling a bright and clear blue sky, adorned with luscious white clouds scattered throughout. The radiant and warm rays of the sun broke through, bathing the surroundings in a pleasant glow. A ninja must be able to see through deception and think for themselves if they wish to be competent, Kakashi lectured. In the ninja world, those who break the rules and codes are considered scum, that's true. But. Kakashi paused and gazed into the sky, lost in the depths of his memories, some of which he might have wished to forget. Those who abandon their friends, he said with a hint of sadness in his voice, are worse than scum. The weight of his statement hung in the air, leaving a profound impact on the three genin who had just passed his test. The three genin absorbed Kakashi's words, surprised by the depth and profound ideals their sensei lived by. Naruto's expression showed conflicting emotions, but there was also a deep sense of admiration evident in his eyes. The encounter had left a lasting impression on all three of them, shaping their understanding of what it truly meant to be a ninja. Facing the trio, Kakashi dramatically raised his hand and gave them a thumbs up as a sign of his approval. That's it for the test. Everyone passes. Team 7 starts their mission tomorrow. He announced with a sense of pride and satisfaction, officially declaring them as a team ready to embark on their ninja missions together. I did it, I did it. I became a ninja. Naruto exclaimed, jumping up and down in sheer joy. The realization of his accomplishment and the official recognition of his ninja status overwhelmed him with happiness. All right. We did it. Sakura exclaimed in obvious joy, despite still being tied to the stump. Cha. I did it, now I can grow stronger and be with Sasuke-kun at the same time. Inner Sakura mentally cheered, feeling a surge of determination and excitement for the future. Sasuke didn't vocalize his joy like the other two, but the visible smirk on his face revealed his inner satisfaction. He, too, was very happy to have passed and become an official ninja. His reserved nature might have kept him from expressing it as exuberantly as Naruto and Sakura, but a sense of accomplishment was evident in his demeanor. Let's go home, Kakashi announced, his hands tucked into his pockets as he turned away from the training area. Naruto and Sasuke both got to their feet and followed Kakashi's lead, walking away from the training area. The feeling of camaraderie and the sense of accomplishment lingered in the air as they made their way back, ready to embark on new missions and face the challenges that awaited them as ninjas. Hey, wait. Sakura cried out, her legs wiggling in obvious struggle as she attempted to escape. You forgot to untie me. She reminded Kakashi, not wanting to be left behind while still bound to the stump. Come back. The bee continued, 